Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Game Time on Your View. I am Sean Hood. We're here in Virginia Beach, Virginia, for Bishop Sullivan Catholic taking on Cheshire Academy. It looks to be a great game. Matt Hatfield joining me. Thank you, Matt. What do you think of this game we have today? Well, Sean, we got an outstanding matchup. Cheshire Academy got off to a fast start this season, had to hold on for their last victory, the closest of the year, while Bishop Sullivan opened up 2-4 and four against tough competition, but they're rolling off two big-time wins. This should be a great battle. It absolutely should be. You've got the momentum of Bishop Sullivan. They want to keep that going after a big, big win just last week, and now they want to keep that momentum rolling here against Cheshire Academy, a team who will look to grind them into the ground and slow down that momentum. But both teams have some real weapons on their offense and their defense, and over at Bishop Sullivan, probably nobody more so than Taraji Mitchell. No question about it. This game is littered with college football prospects, and you begin with Mitchell, a top 50 player in the nation, headed to Ohio State University. He is your prototypical run-stuffing thumper from the linebacker position. Reminds me a lot of Raquan McMillan, who played at Ohio State, a second-round draft choice by the NFL's Miami Dolphins. He can get it done. He's the complete package. And that's what they're going to be looking to get behind Taraji on this win and slow down somebody who, a jack-of-all-trades on Cheshire Academy, Jared Martino, running back from uh, Cheshire. This is his first season in the program coming over from here. He was previously a player of the year at the cornerback spot in Massachusetts, now playing running back, but they'll move him around everywhere on the football field. He's actually, his best sport is baseball, believe it or not. He's getting a lot of recruiting attention from UMass, Boston College, and others. He is a dandy of a football player. Yeah, and it's looking to be a great game. We figure you're going to have the, the momentum of, of Bishop Sullivan trying to be slowed down by ground and pound, drive him into the ground offense and defense from Cheshire Academy. It figures to be a great game. I'm excited for this. Thank you for joining us here on Game Time. Your review. Stay tuned for more game time after the break. With Cox High Speed Internet, you get access to super fast in home Wi Fi to power all your devices and do the things you love online. And now, when you're traveling, you have free access to the nation's largest Wi Fi network with over 500,000 hotspots, so you can stay connected in places such as New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, and many more. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com slash learn. Go to OurTurnToHelp.org and donate what you can. Hope is on the way. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for Cheshire Academy versus Bishop Sullivan Catholic here in Virginia Beach, Virginia at Bishop Sullivan. Matt Hatfield and I calling the action for you. And this game getting ready to kick off looks to be a great game. It really does, uh, Sean, as you've got two teams that have played national level competition out of state foes as you got a team coming in from connecticut to virginia to take on a bishop sullivan program that uh in year two under chris scott the head coach of uh, bishop sullivan has really elevated the program to now they're playing a lot of big time programs in cheshire trying to keep that undefeated season going tough matchup today absolutely and uh, you know bishop sullivan had a harder climb to get to this point uh with the momentum they do have after that big big 68 nothing win they had previously they've got that momentum they do not want to see it halted today as they prepare for the kickoff yeah, and i think uh, as, as you look at some of the, the key things for both teams to win the game today for bishop sullivan they want to get off to that fast start so that they have a lead play from in front cheshire wants to really like you mentioned the open ground and pound run the ball make this a game where they can dictate things with time of possession and run the football between the tackles. And here's the kick. Oh, uh, onside kick and recovered quickly. And that's going to little unexpected start to that. Well, they've been doing that a lot, even going back to when Chris Scott was at Ocean Lakes as the head coach and uh, led the Dolphins to a state championship a few years ago. But Coach David Dykeman told me this week that um, we will take it. If, we, if our hands team does a good job on onside and squib kicks, we have no problem with that because that gives us good field position as they start off here at the 48-yard line. And now here you see Josh Commune, quarterback for Cheshire Academy, making his way onto the field. Quite a passer, passing 10 touchdowns so far, 648 yards for the season. Not a quarterback you want to sleep on. No, but he's gotten better as the season has progressed. He's really gotten comfortable in this offense. And there you go, pass out there. Across, runs out wide, and beautiful gain of about five. 
And he goes to Martino there, but you see right there on the stop to Roger Mitchell. That's something he's gotten better at this year, Sean, is his coverage, moving sideline to sideline. That was the one area of his game that wasn't maybe elite. This year he's become very good at improving in that aspect. And here we go. Cheshire Academy lining up now again. They are going to want to ground and pound slow and steady wins the race. Just run Bishop Sullivan into the ground here. Oh. And it looks like we're waiting for an official here. Uh, both get linemen are pointing the other way. So yeah, of course. <laughs> they both can't be right. And it looks like we're going to go with, as we see the second at nine Number now called 58. up. Five yard penalty, second down. All right. And you heard of second yard, that is uh, second day nine for the penalty. You saw the keys there for Cheshire. The thing that they've got to do today, Sean, is just control the tempo. Be balanced. Don't do it with one-dimensional throwing or just running. Because if you do that against Bishop Sullivan's defense, they will expose you. And then contain Tyler DeSue when he gets the ball for Bishop Sullivan on offense because their starting running back, Jake Lowe, is out with the torn ACL. So he could do a lot of the running today. And here we go. Lined up again. Bishop Sullivan waiting for the snap. There it is. Handoff. Runs outside. And big connection there, but not any gain, really. It didn't look like, but... Actually, you got a gain of, I'm sorry, got a gain of about five, it looks like. Well, that defensive front for uh, Coach Scott and uh, the D coordinator, Antonio McClenney, they really swarm and fly to the football fast and in a hurry. Besides Mitchell, they have Dante Burke. You want to keep an eye on him, number 18, the six foot three, 240 pound defensive head headed to Temple after this year. All right, third down. They're going to be looking to, here they go, Kamian looking for the pass, throws it up, over, and misses it. That was a well-covered play there, Sean, as Mondo Walker, you see number two in coverage there, his first year with the Crusaders. He's getting a lot of attention for the next level, including Army, one of the schools showing a lot of interest in him. Now we're just waiting for the kickoff, three and out for Cheshire Academy. The Bishop Sullivan defense doing their job and containing that high-level offense of Cheshire Academy. They've consistently had about three or four takeaways a game, uh, close to about 10 to 12 tackles for loss on average. So it's a defense that can force three and out in a hurry. There's the kick. Long kick, not too high. Bounces right around the 25. Somebody going to pick it up. No, it looks like it's going to stop right in front of the 20. And now the... Bishop Sullivan Crusaders will take over with the ball, and we will see what they can get going behind their quarterback, DeSue. He's headed to Maryland to play his college football, and uh, you know, a couple years ago he was known as sort of a pocket passer. Now he's improved to where he's a more mobile quarterback and get on the edges and do damage. He did that in the opener that they lost to American Heritage out of Florida, and a guy that uh, is becoming a dual threat quarterback in a lot of ways. And if the defense isn't ready for that, that can spell a long day for Cheshire Academy. Handoff there, breaks through the line, good run. Wow, look at him. Takes at least three or four Cheshire players to bring him down. And, and I mean, you saw there that br a good offensive line work and finding the hole quickly. And then Bishop Sullivan, like it says, off to a quick start. They want to get there and make their plays and keep that momentum going. Yeah, they have to win the battle up front of the offensive and defensive line. they got some youngsters on the O line, but they're going to be promising ones. And then be sound in special teams. That's the one area that's really cost them in a couple of games this year. Other record would be Pass better. out to the side. Looking to gain some ground and brought out just by the 30, it looks like. Good pursuit there. You see number four on the stop there for... Cheshire Academy, you see just a simple pass just in the flats, and you see those outside backers really running well to the back out of the backfield, knowing that he's not your bound, pound and ground type of running back. Absolutely. He manages to pick up, though, about uh, eight yards for them. Third and two coming up for Bishop Sullivan. We'll see if they can convert in their first third down scenario. Just waiting for the snap. Here we go. Handoff, runs it through on the third and two. Looks like he got it. That's right, first down, Crusaders. And that interior O-line giving Martinez good push here as you see the shotgun snap and hand it up to him up the middle and uh, good blocking from your right guard, your center, your left guard as they're getting good push up front for him to run. I and mean, he took a hit right there initially, but still managed to squeeze out another yard or two before he went down. Here we go, another handoff right there, runs through again, plowing right through that, off that defensive line. 
And that's something Coach Scott, as well as his own line coach, John Hoggard, talked about. The mud diggers, those guys up front, they graduated Noah, Arm, uh, Noah Knapp from last year, went to Army, and that was a question mark for them. But these guys are starting to get more acclimated up front of the line. Uh, keep on a couple of those guys, including Tommy Sefcik, number 76 for them. Martinez lined up back next to Dessou as well as another. And oh, fake. And here he goes. He's going back, looking for a pass. Throws it right. Oh, what a hit. But he doesn't go down. He doesn't go down. He's still up. Look at him go. Turns around. Look at this run. Unbelievable. Brought down around the 32. You saw the a missile hit by Josh Job, number two, the Miami of Florida commit four star safety. But what a job by Tankland, who's usually unloading on guys Ooh. in the defensive back spot to keep his balance, hold on to the football most impressively, and slips then scoot another for some yardage. Slips another tackle, slips right around a guy, and finally gets brought down. What a performance there. Got to be happy with that. Bishop Sullivan, there's that momentum they want to keep going. They do not want to be brought down, and that was never more evident than right there. Tell you what, Tank Land is a tough cookie. However, he might not want to go across the middle against Job again because that, a couple more of them hits, it could be rough uh, sled the rest <laughs> of the way as it will be a penalty on the Crusaders that uh, backed them up on that one. But that was uh, some highlight real play there on both sides of the ball. The big hit, and then Tank Land with the catch. I mean, look at that hit. How did he not go down? At this point, you just, I mean, is the man made of, he's, he's like a brick wall. He, he just bounced right off of it, then slips right around there. What kind of poise is that? And it, finally, before, before being brought down. Well, the, the penalty, penalty was declined. declined. Well, because it's third down and six. Uh, if it would be second and long, gives him two more downs. So uh, I think they're Agreed. thinking about getting him out here off the field. Try and contain him to that punt. six yards. For, oh, that snap looked a little rough. Throws out, intercepted! Intercepted, running back. Is any, nobody's going to stop him. Cheshire Academy, Ch Chase Kinsley with the interception. What an interception and runs it back for a touchdown. Cheshire Academy is on the board. This week, Coach Dykeman told me he loves the ball skills of Kinley, the six foot three wide receiver. This time he's going to play on defense as he just catches it. And when he gets the catch, he knows what to do with it in open space. Green grass, pick six to the house. And uh, that's the type of defensive spark play they can get the whole team fired up in the offense when they get the ball back. The senior from Cheshire Academy with a very important play right there. I mean, like, they declined that, that penalty, and then look with that. It turns around into six points for them. Well, they knew they were going underneath for a short throw. They haven't tested them deep, so great job in coverage to really play up close, physical, aggressive, and they got the pick. It paid off there being aggressive in the secondary. That snap looked to be part of the problem. Commune having to almost panic to try and get the ball off before he ended up on his back with it. And unfortunately ends up in that interception. Now we're waiting on the extra point. Here's the kick. It's up. And it's good. So 7 and nothing, Cheshire. Stay. Make sure, make sure you stay with us for more game time on your view after the break. With Cox High Speed Internet, you get access to super fast in-home Wi-Fi to power all your devices and do the things you love online. And now, when you're traveling, you have free access to the nation's largest Wi-Fi network with over 500,000 hotspots so you can stay connected in places such as New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, and many more. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. Back here in Virginia Beach as Cheshire Academy has jumped out to an early lead against Bishop's, Bishop Sullivan here in Virginia Beach off of an interception from Chase Kinsley. That, what, what an interception that got Cheshire off and running. There's momentum for them, and that's got to do something to Bishop Sullivan. It inadvertently, I mean, we were talking about how they wanted to keep that momentum going. It looked like they were doing it, and then just like that. Well, and underneath, you saw the big hit, the play before by Job on Tank Land, who somehow, some way kept his balance. And now you go away from Job, who's that safety, he can play up in the box against the run. And then you see the play by Kinsley with the, with the pick. He's no more for his offensive prowess. But uh, I don't think Coach Dykeman could have asked for a better start. You make this trip down to Virginia, leave at 6 in the morning on a Friday, eight-hour trip, and uh, his team is not showing any uh, slow legs at all. No, and there's the kickoff, and it's going to go out of bounds. Touchback. So they're going to bring that back out to the 20. 
that is such a huge deal in high school. People that, that are used to watching college football or the professional ranks, you think, well, what's the big deal with touchback? But in high school football, there's so many lethal return men, especially on this Bishop Sullivan team when you look at the likes of Keontae Jenkins and Armani Chapman, the Virginia Tech commit, to make them have to go 80 yards and start from the 20, especially after you get a pick six, uh, that can really take an offense out of its uh, rhythm. Yeah, it's definitely not going to do much for the morale, but Bishop Sullivan has to find a way to will themselves back into this, not let this early this early uh, lead by Cheshire sap their, their energy and their strength. And here's the snap. Commune looking, throws it off, and what a catch! What a catch! There's Chapman. But we were just talking about him Chet on return. You're right, we did. <laughs> right on cue, Armani Chapman, the... Uh, Four-star wide receiver for the Crusaders in his first year with them. Just a deep post route over the middle of the field. Look at this. Just long throw. Beautiful like a bullet. Oh, what a throw. And what a catch. Chapman absolutely getting them going again. And that's got to reinvigorate the offense. Here's the handoff. Run out to the outside. Look at him breaking away. And he's still not down. Finally brought down at about the 43. And now you're seeing they're getting those playmakers in space, using their speed, their athleticism. As that's the uh, freshman there, I'm sorry, the sophomore, Keontae Jenkins. He's got some wiggle. What a great, oh, here we go, snap. Quick play, throws it up and over, and oh, incomplete. Quick off, hurry up offense there. I like the aggressive mindset here by Coach Scott and his offensive staff, though, because they really kind of came out conservative on that first series. Now you've got to take some shots down the field. Let's see if our athlete can match up with your athletes in space, vertically. And uh, so far, it's looking pretty good for Bishop Sullivan on this drive here. The one thing you don't want to do is become one-dimensional and rely on the pass. So keep mixing in the running game, whether it's even some jet sweeps or getting some guys on an end around, some pitch plays. And Martinez is the one back in the backfield here with a uh, few receivers lined up to the right. Trips right for the Crusaders. A little adjustment there on the line. And now Commune calling for the snap. Here it is. Looking out to the left. Throws it out. Beautiful catch. Look at this. Dodges one, two. Oh, the third defender brings him down. What a play by number. Actually, number Sheridan Jones, yeah. Yeah, Sheridan Jones. Great job in the pocket there for DeSue. The offensive line giving him time, and then he finds Sheridan Jones for a good pickup here. As a DeSue now quickly with over 50 yards passing in his ball game, he's starting to get comfortable. A little bit of that momentum coming up back, that morale we were talking about. Pass out to the right here. Doesn't, oh man, slips a hit. Oh, but now brought down again. Right around the 23, 24, it looks like. And you're seeing they're mixing up a lot of these routes here for the receivers. They have four or five different receivers. We've seen Jones, we've seen Chapman, Gregory here. This is a simple little tunnel screen play here. And uh, Beautiful. unable to get the block in as you see that defense just collapsing on the receiver there to make the stop as it's now uh, gonna be second and long here for Bishop Sullivan. And now uh, there's a snap again. Commune falling back, throws it up, out to the right and overthrown. Overthrown. He was looking, it looks like he was looking for, was he looking for Chapman again? No, he was looking for Sheridan, Sheridan again, Sheridan Jones. And uh, Sheridan Jones is a guy that uh, last year was known more as a defensive back, but when you have a lot of these two-way playmakers, you got to use them on both sides of the ball, especially this time of year where some injuries start to pile up. Uh, you got to use all your weapons to your full disposal there. Third and ten, This might, they got to convert this. Commune back, throws it out. What a draw, oh, just off the hands of, a Monty, uh, of Armani Chapman. And you see the pressure applied there by... Travis Ecke for Cheshire Academy, six foot four, 230 pounds, defensive lineman. See, he comes free right here on the left side of oh. the line here before that pass is incomplete. Just a little bit high and out of reach of Chapman here on fourth down. Bishop Sullivan will go for it. They don't usually like to kick on fourth down, and uh, this is a critical one right here. Well, if they can convert this and uh, get the first down or even, a, even score would be amazed, but even just getting the first down would do a, a ton for their morale. Keep that momentum going. It's a do or die situation for them right now. Falls back under pressure and brought down. Commune sacked. That's the one thing, Sean, about having an empty backfield. You're susceptible to the blitz, and it comes from the blind side. And you see Bryce Sebastian, the star running back for Cheshire. He comes free. Right tackle couldn't even pick him up there. You don't have an extra blocker at tight end or fullback to pick him up, and that's going to get off the field every time. All right, stay tuned for more game time on your view after this quick break.
Watching TV the way you want all starts with having the right connections. Cox High Speed Internet and Cox TV. At home, you get access to the fastest in-home Wi-Fi to stream seamlessly on multiple devices. Away from home, you can access more than 300,000 Wi-Fi hotspots, so you can watch a variety of TV shows online or by downloading your favorite TV network apps. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. That was number, it looked like, uh, was that Chase Kinsley, I that believe? That was Kinsley, yeah, and uh, Commune mixing it up with his receivers here. As you see that offensive line uh, really doing a nice job against that Bishop Sullivan defense, which will send seven, eight rushers consistently at the quarterback. And you know, they're out to this early lead. They managed to sack quarterback Tyler DeSue, and that was just, that was a big, big hit for the Bishop Sullivan offense. They're now fighting uphill again. As oh, There goes Cheshire again. Not much on that one, though. Well, you see that defensive line now starting to flex its muscles a bit there. Akeem Smith, the big six foot one, 290 pound lineman. He's got a bunch of power five schools looking at him. Rutgers, one of those schools in the mix for his services as uh, they need that interior D line to step it up as they're really focusing on trying to contain Burke as well as Taraji Mitchell at the linebacker spot. So one of those other D linemen or linebackers has to really make their presence felt here on third down. Well, if there's anybody who can make his presence felt, it's got to be Taraji, Taraji Mitchell. That's somebody that they're looking to kind of put this team behind and run over Cheshire Academy. Cheshire, look at that dump off right there. And look at that. Just barreling through. These guys not wanting to go down with single hits today. It's taken two, three guys to bring everybody down. Basic little shovel pass there, Sean, and you see that defensive front of Bishop Sullivan reading their keys well here as you see Martino there at the quarterback rolling right but you see four or five gray jerseys right there to sniff it out and I mean it doesn't have to be fancy as long as it works fourth and three here and they're going to kick it off no big surprise there they've got the lead don't want to give Bishop Sullivan great field position by missing on a fourth down and it's going to be picked up around the 26 or 7 oh there's a flag on the play but he's still going look at him run look at him look at him finally brought down at about the 55. I'm tell 45, excuse me, I got excited. <laughs> tell you what, if nothing else, Tank Land has had a nice uh, improvisational uh, first quarter here, but just, I mean, he's on the move looking great here. And he's being recruited mostly for the next level as a cornerback, but showing it on punt returns and catching the football on offense. And uh, <laughs> that's the type of quick three and out the Crusaders needed to give their offense a chance here to tie this thing up. Ball on the other side of the 50. And I will look for them to get back to the running game here to establish that and set up play action down the field. Now they line up again right around. It looks like it would be about the 46. There's a snap. Sue running out. There he goes. That's that other on. That's that dangerous quitter. If you remember what you were talking about, he's running. Look at him dodging people left, right, and center. Comes down around the fifth, right at the 15. Beautiful movement by DeSue. That was the thing Coach Dykeman was most concerned about leading up to this matchup was containing DeSue when he gets to the edge. It's a fake handoff quarterback keeper, just a basic read play, and DeSue read it beautifully. Look at him cutting back across the field, slipping that tackle, trying to get up and over, but great stop there finally. I mean, he was on the move. He wasn't letting anything stop him as long as he had anything to say about it. There's the snap. DeSue back, throws it out to the right, really high up, and overthrown. And that's the part of his game that I think intrigued Maryland and uh, many of the schools recruiting him is was that could he be a guy that could make plays with his feet? So much in the college game now, Sean, as quarterbacks, you have to be a dual threat. Can you throw and you run? And DeSue offers that for the next level. Uh, absolutely. In spades, we just saw a great example of that. And it hasn't been his go-to, but having that backup as a, that idea as a weapon, what a dangerous quarterback that makes you. Who now waiting for the snap? Here it comes, hands it off right up the middle, slamming through, picking up number three. You got Michael Martinez slamming right through that offensive line, using them to allow himself to pick up several yards before coming down. A little bit of tippy toe at the beginning of that run for Martinez, but then he lowered the shoulder, ran with some power, and that's what they need him to do more of here. The Crusaders are to finish off drives and get in the end zone. No hesitation, power right through that line. Third and four, pick up about six. And they need to convert this to get, stand another chance of getting on the board. I'm not sure he got it. And see, when you get closer to 15, that's where, you know, if you're in your own, if you're in a shotgun formation, some of the tippy-toe, put your foot in and make a guy miss here. At this point, you've got to lower run hard 
you're going to get the first down. And he got it here. Those he, mud diggers up wow. front. Wow. Wow. Helping, helping create some room there. Give some, some props to those linemen. Tommy Sevcik as well as uh, Alteric Barlow, the sophomore. Those guys pushing the pile well. Martinez earned every inch of that four yards. Unbelievable. Sure? Now Sue waiting. Here we go. Over the snap, they're still looking to get on the board here to get in a little, little hesitation there. Slipped it looked like a little bit, but still manages to pick up a few yards before DeSue goes down. Let's go, let's go. Four, four, four. And DeSue not scared. I mean, he ran right through that line. Saw he, he slipped a little bit right when he went when he caught the snap. You see it here in the replay. Good pace to this offense for Bishop Sullivan. Here's ready to line up slip. and snap it again. Oh, hey, right through and hey! Touchdown, Crusaders, they're on the board. We got ourselves a ball game. We do, and uh, give that defense a ton of credit for getting that three and out. The punt return by Tankland to put him on the other side of the 50, and then DeSue using his legs to get some points on the board for his team. Now an extra point away from tying his puppy up with a little bit over go. two minutes to go in the first. Martinez in the back. Oh, look at that. They hand it off to Sue and just plow it right over that line. And the kick is up, and it is good. All tied up, 7-7, to seven, Cheshire Academy and Bishop Sullivan. This is a fun game. This is really turning out. We knew it was going to be. We've got these two really kind of balanced teams despite their, 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 their win-loss records. This is what you expect and hope for. And again, Cheshire hasn't had a tight game until last week. This could be a barn burner, Sean. And we've got more of it coming up right after this break. With On Demand from Cox Advanced TV, there's more exciting entertainment available on your TV than ever before. Hit movies and hot new releases, tons of free TV shows, concerts and music videos, and access to huge libraries of premium channel series, movies, and more. Press the On Demand button on your remote and you're ready to go, all on your schedule, right at home. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. And we are back here on Game Time and your view as Bishop Sullivan takes on Cheshire Academy. Matt Hadfield joining me as we wait for the kickoff from Bishop Sullivan after that hard fought touchdown and extra point. And using the running game earlier in the game, the passing attack got them some chances to score. They didn't capitalize at the end on third and fourth down, but you see there the running game there with DeSue setting it up on that scramble, really helping them get in position to punch it in. And here we go again. Looks to be... And there's that, goes up and it's caught. He calls a fair catch. At the 31 yard line, not terrible field position for the Cheshire Academy offense. No, not at all. And I think that's gonna be the, the element of this game, special teams that could swing the outcome either way uh, before it's all said and done because uh, they have so many lethal return men to the Crusaders of Bishop Sullivan. They have had some issues in the kicking game at times, but Cheshire needs to make sure that they're also sound themselves when it comes to kicks and punts. Don't give Bishop Sullivan excellent field position to begin on offense. Here we go, starting at the 31. Cheshire Academy are on their way back out. And they're going to line up with Joshua Commune as he looks to get Cheshire back in the lead. Bishop Sullivan, of course, not wanting to let that happen. Pass out to the left. Oh, turn around and caught. He almost had barely any time to see that. Great, great gain on that pass. Goes at it about the 40. And Bryce Sebastian is the guy they want to get the ball to more. He hasn't had a touch until just now. You go about 10 minutes of action without him touching the football. He had that sack on defense, but he is the main weapon in addition to Martino for this offense for the Cats. Now it looks like Cheshire Academy looking, maybe maybe thinking to mix things up a little bit. They realize they've got to take Cheshire, uh, Bishop Sullivan off their game because, again, we do have these dangerous weapons over on the Bishop Sullivan defense, uh, specifically Taraji Mitchell, and they don't want to run into that. Oh, look at that run through the line there. Breaks free, and there he goes. Oh, man, what a run. Trying to use his teammate to block, and he is brought down at about the third, right around the 25, it seems like. Good tackle by Alex Oates. Otherwise, Martino might have had himself a 60-yard touchdown. But you see why Martino is such a weapon because you don't know if he's going to line up at quarterback and get the ball. You don't know if he's going to run it, throw it. And right here, it's a handoff from Commune. Runs to the left side, breaks the tackle. And you see they sealed away from Mitchell because he's the guy that could have blown up that play. 
And again, just as you brought up Martino, that's that other weapon they were looking to utilize, and they did to expert, expert usage there. 33-yard gain on that one. So uh, I think they're going to maximize Martino and Sebastian here. You see 756 yards rushing and eight touchdowns on the year coming into today. And actually, I mean, Martino, as you said, he's a, he's a threat as well because, I mean, hey, if they need him to step into another position, he can play quarterback. He can, and uh, he was a player of the year in Massachusetts at that QB spot. He's, he's really a high-level baseball player, but we've seen UMass and Boston College and other schools suddenly get on the radar or have him on their radar as we look at Chris Scott here trying to figure out what they need to do to adjust defensively and keep this Cats offense from getting in the end zone themselves. Some big gains need to be slowed down. Run out to the left, and... Not much of a gain there, big hits. Taraji Mitchell in on that one. You're gonna see various formations from both of these offenses. You'll see empty, you'll see uh, both put two men in the backfield, three or four receivers, and watch for the jet sweeps all day long because these two teams have really shifty guys that can make a player or two miss in space. We're inside of a minute now here in the first. Cheshire Academy trying to make something happen. Before the end of the first, let's see what commune he takes the snap. Looking out left, throws it up high, overthrown though. I think Sean will see fewer shots taken down the field for Cheshire on offense than Bishop Sullivan because their offense is more built to play from tackle to tackle, whereas Bishop Sullivan's offense is going to be more wide open, especially without low on offense. Now we're taking a look at the, the sideline for Cheshire Academy as they're trying to figure out what they need to do to try and get back in the lead. And you see the uh, staff and assistance for Coach Dykeman there along with him on the sideline. And this is a key second down here with under a minute to go because you don't want to get in third and long. It could be really dangerous for them. There's a snap. Throws it back to Martino. Oh, another hand. Oh, look at that. What a throw. He's wide open. Wow. <laughs> Wow, Chase Kinsley, wide open, not a person anywhere near him. He won trickeration, Steve Spurrier would be proud on that one. What razzle-dazzle by the Cats on offense. Can't recall seeing that play before in a high school game as you see multiple hand-ups here. You see one, see two, now I'm gonna throw it down the field and nobody covering Kinsley. Everybody played up against the run and he was wide open, he could have scored a touchdown 50 more yards on the field. Absolutely, at that point, I mean, nobody could have even thought about catching him. I, I forgot he was over there. And here we go, looking for the extra point. Gives themselves another seven point lead in this game. And the kick is up. And it's good. And so, Cheshire Academy now 14, leading the Bishop Sullivan Crusaders at seven. With uh, 29 seconds, 29 and, seconds left in this quarter. And Kinsley has both touchdowns in this game, Sean. A pick six on defense and then on offense. He's got those ball skills to catch a jump ball, but he didn't need it there. He was just wide open. And that's what happens when you put everybody up in the box and you're playing the run like they've been playing from tackle to tackle. Then you have a chance with no safety help. Once he beats the one corner, cover him, he's gone. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's the danger and the risk you take without having that safety help on the back end to defend a wide receiver as electric as Chase Kinsley. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. He's been a big weapon for them already in this game. And, I mean, we're only in the first quarter. There's plenty of game left for him to continue to be dangerous. And the thing is, this is an offense that in their last game got up to a 21-point lead, ended up holding on to win 28-26. So the one thing the Cats have to do and that hopefully they've learned is don't get comfortable or complacent even playing from in front. This is a Bishop Sullivan team that can score in a hurry. Oh, absolutely. There's the kickoff. Way back, and we're going to get a touchback. So they're going to bring that on out to the 20, and we will see if... They can find a way to get back in this, get down the field and try and score as quickly as possible. See a couple of the uh, sideline guys for Bishop Sullivan, including an injury. They've had about five or six starters, according to Coach Scott, that have been lost for the season due to injury. So it's sort of been a what could have been for Bishop Sullivan with some of those games they lost close early in the season if they were at full strength, perhaps. 
And I mean, the team, you've seen their offense do some amazing things. Their defense is obviously dangerous. So even with those losses, they're still a team to be contended with. I think that says something to the overall depth of the team. Oh, for sure. And this is a team that's played, let's not get it twisted. They haven't played patsies. They've played a lot of high-level caliber competition for the Crusaders with the schedule, an ambitious one that they have put together. So uh, no, no reason to be shamed whatsoever with some of the defeats they've had. There's the snap. Sue thrown up and over, long bomb. Oh, just, just too far. Just too far. So close. That would have been a huge reception had they been able to pull it in. Again, Martinez, uh, Martinez there looking for that. I'm sorry, Ad Chapman looking for that catch. And Chapman is a guy that when he gets down the field, he can, he can find pay dirt. 70, 80-yard touchdowns. He had plenty of them a season ago. And uh, just starting to gain some continuity with DeSue in his passing attack his first year with the Crusaders. Now as they see what they can do to get their momentum rolling again, handoff out to the right, slips the tag, oh, brought down. Right around, looks like right around the 30. And Jenkins, a guy, we're starting to see him more involved in the backfield. I'll be curious to see if we see even more of it in the second, third, and fourth quarters of this ballgame. Absolutely. And We'll see if they, we'll probably get, we're gonna get one more play in it looks like. They better do oh, it quick. maybe quickly. I don't think they will. Uh, nope, looks like we're gonna run short on time, yep. And that is gonna, that's gonna end the first quarter for us here in Virginia Beach. So stick, or, stick around on game time in your view for more of this game after the break. If there's one thing we love, it's watching TV. But did you know you can also watch on the go with TV Everywhere? It's included at no extra charge as part of your Cox TV subscription. Watch live TV and on-demand content anywhere. Your favorite shows, movies, sports, and more on network websites or by downloading TV network apps to your tablet or phone. On the go? Keep watching with TV Everywhere. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Matt Hatfield, Matt Numbers Hatfield. Gentlemen, you're you're fantastic at this, and we're here for, for a really entertaining game between Bishop Sullivan Catholic and Cheshire Academy. A yeah, big third and one coming up. I'll give you some first period stats here in a second as Desu plows through for the oh. middle, and moves the chains. What a run! What a run from quarterback Tyler Desu to start things off here in the second quarter. 85 yards rushing, 57 passing for the Crusaders, a total of 142. For Cheshire, even though they're winning this game, just 78 yards of offense, 49 passing, 29 rushing. But we see hurry up offense now for the Crusaders. Yeah, there's that run. Hands it off again. Looking to slip attack. Oh, but he doesn't. He gets brought down right around. And then it was Martinez. Didn't look like he got much of anything on that one. Been really impressed with number four uh, for for Cheshire on defense, as well as Josh Job, the big time safety who is headed to Miami. It's got some guys on the back end that really played the run well. And there we go, there's a snap to Desu, hands it off again, breaks through the line, and brought down finally, wrapped up well by Bryce, by Seb by Bryce Sebastian on Cheshire Academy to make the stop, but that was a big break in the line. And again, hurry up offense. They're not trying to waste much time. Desue with the snap, hands it off again. No, it was a fake, oh! That was beautiful, he faked me. <laughs> Committed to that fake. We're seeing a <laughs> lot of guys playing both ways for Cheshire 
You wonder if that'll have an effect later on as we look at some of the major talent on this Bishop roster. Mitchell going to Ohio State. DeSouda quarterback going to the Big Ten. Chapman committed Virginia to Virginia Tech. Tech. And then Dante Burke headed to Temple up there in Pennsylvania. There's the handoff again. This offense not slowing down, just plowing through. They're making this defense work. They're trying to grind them down. The, long, the more they have to work against this run game, the more, the more tired they're going to get, the more worn out they're going to get from these hard hits trying to bring guys down. Oh, no doubt about it. And that's what you want to do and you see a timeout now being called here as I think some adjustments will be made on defense coming up. And we'll be back on game time in your view with more right after this break. You know how it is. You're busy and on the go and don't always know when there's a message on your home phone. But Cox Digital Telephone Readable Voicemail has you covered. It converts voicemail messages on your home phone to readable text and automatically sends them to your email address. So you can check messages wherever you have email access, on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Learn more with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. Sullivan, at this point, Cheshire Academy trying desperately to find a way to slow down Bishop Sullivan's offense. That run game has been, it's a hurry up offense and they're just plowing right through the line, not allowing the defense much time to adjust. Well, there's been a little bit of off timing with the passing attack down the field with the students receivers, just a hair off here, a hair off there. So I think that the, the safer bet for them to move the ball down the field and sustain a drive is through the running game with multiple looks. Oh, Dessou, low snap there, falls back, looks for it, a big time pass, caught! And look at that, number five. Chapman, Armani Chapman with a touchdown for the Crusaders. What a throw, what a catch. Timing was perfect on that one. It was just off on a couple of deep shots here, there, but Dessou with a picturesque down the field look spiral, and Chapman hauls it in over a outstretched defender, over and the then he takes shoulder. the bow for a TD. Over the shoulder, reaches back for that catch. Beautiful. You can't ask him to do a better job on that catch. <laughs> that is why he is one of the most coveted wide receiver, defensive back athletes on the East Coast. And here's the kick for the extra point. And it's good. So 14-14. All, all tied up again. This game going to be a nail biter. So stick around right here on Game Time on your view for more right after the break. With Cox High Speed Internet, you get access to super fast in-home Wi-Fi to power all your devices and do the things you love online. And now, when you're traveling, you have free access to the nation's largest Wi-Fi network with over 500,000 hotspots so you can stay connected in places such as New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, and many more. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. A much needed touchdown to keep that offensive momentum and the morale up. Offensively, they've done a nice job. You look at the, the passing and rushing, they've got almost over 100 yards rushing and passing in this first half. We still got 10 minutes and change in the second quarter. It's just been a matter of finishing drives. Well, they found their finisher in Armani Chapman. Buckle up, folks, because this could be a back and forth seesaw affair, a roller coaster. Don't get que queasy. Just, just <laughs> hang in there. It should be a fun one to the finish. And there's the onside kick. And it bounced a little bit. Maybe. Wow, brought down, looks like he recovered it right around the 37. That's the one thing about the squibs and the onside kicks. At some point, they could recover and steal a possession, and that can swing momentum, and they can get a lead and build it. But you also give Cheshire really good field position, starting really not having to go 70, 80 yards, and that's why I think the Cats Demons able to go to the field earlier in the game, Sean, is because they got them on a three and out, they started at their own 20, and that was pretty much it for them so that's something I wonder if they'll change that strategy at all as we progress in this ballgame you'd like to think so because the offense I mean it's not the game is too tight at this point you don't want to give them any extra help and here's we line up again quarterback commune for Cheshire Academy waiting for the snap here it comes throws it out to his left caught and slips a tackle oh oh but brought down at about the 43 that hit that made you go, oh, was Mr. Mitchell with the, with the big time stick there for the Bishop Sullivan defense. But you see, getting the ball to Kinsley, Sebastian, and 
Luke Martino. Those are three guys that are very dynamic, and it's sort of a pick your poison for the defense. Which one do you key in on to stop? Because when you do key in on one, they go to the other one. Absolutely. Kinsley, though, may be the most dangerous one on offense right now for Cheshire. He scored both touchdowns in this game, one on offense, one on defense, and he's the guy on the outside that the Crusaders have to be very careful against. And uh, I'm going to be watching that matchup more as they use both Tank Land and Sheridan Jones against him. There's a snap. Kamu looking to run, and he gets brought down. Doesn't get maybe a gain of two, possibly three. And a really good job defensively there by Price Stevens. He's having to do some kicking for this team too, double duty. And uh, rotating a lot of different guys on, on defense to keep some, some bodies fresh and healthy, especially on that line of scrimmage where you got some of those guys having to play on the O-line. You know, all that, all, that, all that work just builds character, as my father used to say all the time. But now, uh, and this game has been not short on work ethic. These guys have been really working hard for every inch they've gained. Commune there with a the snap, and goes out to his right, and he's down! Brought down by the Crusaders. Beautiful. All important. Sumerian Harrell. Freshman, as you see, he just collapses the pocket, and then he got some help there by Benny Merritt on the play there. That was a senior and a freshman teaming up to make a great combination. And that was that was desperately needed by this Bishop uh, this Bishop Sullivan defense. That really that gets their blood going. It gets them their adrenaline going. They see red now. They're going after that quarterback. Coming. Oh, the kicker drops it. Oh no! Oh no! Uh -oh. Oh, he picks it up, and at this point, wow, the ball. The ball called down a great field position for Bishop Sullivan. Wow. Uh, sad thing to see, just some nerves sitting there on the snap, and then the catch here, we're trying to get the punt off, and that's pretty much what we saw result. Oh. With the nerves, is, can you kick it, what do you do? And it, he's just really indecisive on and what happened. Bounces off his own feet. I mean, it's it's one of those things, we've all been there, butterfingers, it happens, but just it's a, it's a heartbreaking thing to see in the field like that because it's just such a minor mistake that costs them so dearly. Well, now field position has been tilted in Bishop Sullivan's favor. They got the touchdown. They got the momentum, the home crowd behind them, and they have to go less than 30 yards to get on the board and take the lead. Uh, at this point, they could spit from here and land in the end zone. So they're ready to, see, to score another touchdown and take their first lead in this game. I'm not spitting, but you can if you want. I, you know, probably not advisable, not very professional. There's the handoff trying to plow through the line. Does not get very far, though. Ooh. And you saw even DeSue trying to help out there. They're having a hard time, Sean, of running between the tackles in this game as you see the, those defensive linemen up front for Cheshire really, really active in this ball game. Cletus Matherin, six foot two, 275 pound lineman, number 58. He's a big time player on the front for the uh, Cats on defense and really now using three D linemen, so that gives them a chance to match up with some of these wide receivers and backs out of the backfield for the Crusaders. And then line up again. There's the handoff or the snap. I'm sorry. And he's looking deep. No, he thinks about it. Pump fake goes and takes off running. There's he goes. And again, like you said, he's a he's a double he's a double edged sword essentially. He's dangerous on two different different levels. And he took off running. Kind of surprised him. He got a gain there of a few yards. Well, they went to a four down line in front there uh, defensively and. You see it, they're disguising some of the coverage, so DeSue can't quite get a handle on it, but when all things fail and breaks down, take off and run. Absolutely, and he was smart. He saw that tackle coming and took a slide. No need to take the big hit. And he still manages to get back up to the line of scrimmage. There he takes off right through the line. Look at that run. Look at him go. Look at him go. Touchdown, Bishop Sullivan, Michael Martinez. What a run. You know what I love about that run? No hesitation, very decisive. He put his foot in the ground and he went. As you watch it again here, makes the cut and he is off to the races. Touchdown, and they ran that no. one to perfection. Stumbling, bumbling all the way to the end. But you know what? He got the touchdown. He's got to be feeling great. That hole in the in the line that his offensive line created, beautiful. I mean, it it was it was the size of an elephant for him. They did a great job opening that up for Martinez. Wait, they went for the kick and there's a flag on the kick. We'll see what that was about. Yard penalty. Retry. And we got a 15 yard penalty as a result of this. Well, that's going to make it a tougher kick here. Uh, I don't much think tougher. It would go for two. But for Martinez, 
coming into today, 576 yards rushing. It really does wonders for his confidence to get in the end zone now. And that kick is up. Beautiful kick. Beautiful kick, 21 to 14. Bishop Sullivan taking their first lead in this game for today on Game Time on your view. And we'll be back with more of this coverage right after the break. Reliability. For some, it's in their nature. You can almost take their behavior for granted. Always there ever faithful. Sort of like how you expect your internet connection to be. Total reliability with a whole lot of speed. That's Cox High Speed Internet with access to the fastest in-home Wi-Fi. The speed you need today and tomorrow right by your side. And we are back here in game time on your view following Cheshire Academy taking on Bishop Sullivan, the Crusaders, and Bishop Sullivan out to their first lead, 21 to 14. That's got to feel good against, especially against a team the level of Cheshire Academy. Oh, for sure. And offensively, they've done so well today. 134 yards rushing on uh, 17 carries to Sue with 96 yards passing on five completions, hooking up twice with Sheridan Jones and Armani Chapman. And uh, they're starting to really get in a rhythm offensively and another and they... onside squib kick. Ooh, and again, good field position for Cheshire Academy, but we'll see if they can do anything with it this time. Right at the 48-yard line. I mean, that's about as good as you can get it. The one thing about that now is if they go three and out and they don't move okay, the chains, that gives Bishop Sullivan okay offside. field position oh, and they score gotta... back-to-back touchdowns, but we do have offsides. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. What do you got? I think we're... Yeah. We're going to move about five, now, why, five, six why yards are you up here. Play from there, Cliff? Waiting to see what the officials call. Aaron. Cheshire's got to find a way to get Bryce Sebastian going in the running game. He's got one touch today, Sean, on a nine yard reception. No carries yet. It's been really uh, Martino Camune and Jack Purdy with the ball. ball. Dead ball. Offside on the kicking team. Five okay, offsides. Penalty. That's what we're looking at. So they're going to re kick. Well, one thing about that is that gives them a chance to maybe recover the onside again should they go Absolutely. that route. Or if they if they go that route again, for sure. But it also gives them a chance to rethink, maybe, do we want to do this again? Yeah, you can see they actually had, I think yeah. they had two guys offside. I on think that. you're right. And it's got to travel 10 yards before you recover. So uh, even if, I'm not sure he kicked it far enough anyways, had they come up with the football. Something they work on a lot at practice and... It's all about execution. It can look great in practice, but when you go in there on game day, you got to make it happen. Now we'll see if they go with the same plan again. Uh-oh. Here we go. I know one thing. If I'm the, if I'm uh, Coach Dykeman and the Cats here, I'm playing this thing as close as I can and send everybody sprinting to the football because it'll be a live pickskin. Here we go. And now another whistle. Yeah. Officials looking a little confused at the moment, but let's go. What happened? Well, it uh, looks like if, uh, both teams have 11 men on the field, so it, it can't be that. Another penalty. Oh, wow. Didn't see a flag, but wow. At this point, you really got to uh, rethink the your, your strategy. For sure. Because you, now you're giving them the football inside your 40. I mean, easily. It's, Maybe it's, even inside your 35 or 30. If they can manage to get any kind of gain out of it. This just, I mean, at this point. Now you recover it. Uh, you got momentum on your side, and, and they can be demoralized. But it's it's the risk, I think, is greater than the reward, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. That's how I would view it. And as we wait for the kickoff here. There we go. And they definitely rethought it that time. Caught right at the 30, and he takes off running. Chase Kinsley brought down at about the 38. Or 48, excuse me. All about being sound on special teams, and they were there with the tackle. That is one of the keys we outlined in the open. And for, for Cheshire, the thing is, be balanced here. Don't, don't rush and get impatient here. You're only down one score. You're in this ball game. Don't press and feel like you've got to take the the deep shot and get it all back in one play. Absolutely, and still great field position. I mean, you're almost at half field. It's not like you can't do it from here. 
And Bishop Sullivan needs to be a little careful. That was one too many penalties in a row. Now it's Kamian and the Cheshire. Uh, there's a snap handoff going through the line, but stopped, wrapped right up, and brought down quickly. Uh, Number 58. Front. They're engaged, Sean, as you see. Right on that play, Akeem Smith. First year starter for the Crusaders and also number 27, Price Stevens. Keep an eye on him as those two guys really in on that stop. And again, on the edge, they're so worried about number 18, Dante Burke, the Temple commit. You got Mitchell, a linebacker. They got a couple of guys really flying free to the football. You've only got two eyes. How are you supposed to watch all of these guys on defense? And they're all dangerous, every single one of them. And, and they're uh, gonna... this could take away the run a little bit here as they've got four receivers. Second and long, low snap. Tries to get it off quickly. Oh, off the fingers. Tipped off the fingers of number 11, Bryce Sebastian. And we may see it, we may see it starting to affect the Cats now at this point. The, uh, the, the demoralizing nature of this. They're, they're down for the first time in the game. And it seems like Bishop Sullivan's starting to get into their rhythm. Well, they haven't really trailed this year. They've had a lot of uh, blowout victories. Yeah. Their last one was their closest one, 28-26. They got up 21-0 in that game. So this is really a tough test on the road. You find out about what you're made of here and uh, how you battle through adversity. Oh, we're well, getting a lot of point in here. Looking for a false start, maybe. Dead ball. False start. Yep. Offense, number 72. Five-yard penalty, third down. Um, that's definitely something they don't want. You can't start making mistakes now when you're in this kind of hole already. When we talked about winning the battle in the trenches. That was going to be so critical to deciding who comes out on top today. And right now that defensive line for Bishop Sullivan giving the O-line for the Cats major problems. You wonder about maybe even going max protect here because you drop back here, whether it's Camoon or Martino, to throw it. Uh, you're going to see a heavy dose of pressure as we saw even on that third down touchdown they got uh, earlier in the first half. And there's the snap. Oh, brought down in the backfield. Wrapped up, nowhere to go. Beautifully done. The second sack for the freshman, Zamarion Harrell. As Look he at comes that. in there, he's already got good size for a ninth grader. Six foot two, 188 pounds as that Whew. linebacker safety hybrid. It's no wonder Auburn's already taken a liking to him as a ninth grader. So Marion Hara could be the next big time star coming out of the Tidewater area, which has produced so many pros and so many talented football players. I mean, the fourth and long at this point is, is an understatement. Wow, that snap up and over, and we got a flag on the play. Because they were looking at just, I mean, they're just looking to kick it away, and we can't. Now we'll wait now. Dead ball. Encroachment. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Uh, Bishop Sullivan a little anxious there, wanting to block it. And, and you might be thinking about sending everybody after him, because remember the last time he, he couldn't handle the snap. So if, if you send ten bodies at him coming forward and he can't catch the snap, that could be disaster written all over it for the Cats. Trying to try to rattle him a little bit if you can get those guys at him quick enough. Well, adjustment here on the line. There's the snap. Uh, not a great handle on it, but still gets it off. Decent kick. Bounces it. That's a pretty good kick. Bounces it all the way back to about the right around the 16. It's a good move by Tank Lynn to get away from that football. I, I was at a football game just the other day uh, in Chesapeake, Sean, and it was two muff punting, and that's something that can swing momentum right back to Cheshire. That ball's bouncing around. There's no need to return it, and Link wisely got away from it. And a chance here with a little bit over five minutes for Bishop Sullivan to control the clock a little bit, get the running game going, and if they suck an extra defender into the box, then you can take a shot deep with Chapman or Jones down the field. But uh, I got a feeling knowing, knowing the type of coach Chris Scott is, he, he wants to really try to put a dagger in here before the half. So you might get that deep shot here sooner than later. And here we go. There's the snap. DeSue with a quick pass off to the right. And oh, brought out at about the 20, maybe just shy. And Zachary Spencer read that. He saw the dump off coming, and he just went full speed ahead. And that was a tough hit there. Crusaders, nothing doing on that play. Fighter! 
No need to rush here. You see now Bishop Sullivan going to more of a relaxed type of approach on offense. They've got that lead. They're feeling good. They've got that momentum on their side. There's the handoff again. Runs out wide to the left and brought down at about the 25. Number 11. We're seeing a lot of Jenkins today. I thought we'd see more carries for Martinez who had that 21 yard touchdown run earlier here in the second quarter, but uh, wanting to utilize Jenkins' is make you miss ability in space. He's got some shiftiness to him, even though he's known more for his play at defensive back. Five carries, 47 yards for Jenkins so far. You see Dessou communicating with his, with his receivers as he waits the snap. Oh, oh, look at the fake handoff. And he tries to run through, slips a tackle, pushes through, gets almost to the 30, stopped at about the 29. Good move by Dessou there, excellent work. I mean, he saw that maybe didn't commit to the handoff fake that much, but he still managed to power through, slip a tackle, and get yardage. Well, the thing you don't think about with, with quarterbacks is reading their blocks, because you, you think of it more with running backs, but Dessou did a nice job there of seeing where the lane was to run and, and read it beautifully to get the chains moving on third down here. And now a chance here to just keep milking that clock a little bit here and have a chance to score before the half ends. And slams it right through. Gain of about mm, four. Seen a lot of Cletus Matherin, the 2019 defensive lineman. Hard to move around. He's got an army offer already on the table for the junior or the Cats. He's the guy they need to break through and make that disruptive play behind the line of scrimmage, a tackle for a loss or maybe forcing a fumble. There's the snap to Sue looking, holding it a little bit, throws it up. Oh, out of the hands. Heavy coverage uh, down the field. And a good job down the field by Christos Argus, the defensive back of the Cats. As now you're seeing the Crusaders double teaming Matherin on that play here. If you can see the line of scrimmage, you see it right there. Those two interior blockers having to get a handle on him, and that might allow a blitz to come free here and get after Dessou with two linemen being occupied to stuff the middle in Matherin. And there you see Matherin. Very key player there. Argus, good job down the field, and Dessou taking off, running through that line. Look at the hole! Dessou going! Everybody looking to catch him. Dessou running, he's at the 20, and he's out! Steps out of bounds, the referee went down. <laughs> the referee went down before Dessou goes down. Well, chasing him's hard. These guys can get out of breath. I don't blame I'd be going down too. <laughs> you might as well, Sean. Watch us here as they run to the left side. Great blocking up front, and Dessou showing off the wheels here. A second straight third down conversion, and this one's even bigger as they're inside the red zone with under three minutes to go oh. before the break. <laughs> Argus, actually, that time, key running over the ref on accident, but I mean. I hope he's all right, though. Ooh, uh, he's, a a he's tough. He hopped right up. Beautiful, beautiful work by Dessou. 47-yard gain, and guess what? 10 carries now, 100 yards on the money for Tyler Dessou. That's a good average, 10 yards a carry on 10 attempts. It's <laughs> a great average. That means you're moving the chains every time you run the ball with him, so that's a pretty good idea. I'd keep going with that. He's getting a better average on that than, than running backs get. He is, and that was the thing that, uh, the coaching staff and Coach Dykeman told me earlier in a week they were worried about was containing him when he escapes the pocket. And on two straight third down plays, he showed why he is dangerous in the open field as a scrambler. Two years ago, he couldn't have done that. That's something he's really worked on diligently in the offseason and summer, summertime camps. And uh, he's added that to his repertoire. And that's why Bishop Sullivan's offense can be so hard to bottle up because you have those receivers to worry about. And then you have DeSue scrambling around. Now here we go again, Dessou, I mean, he's got to be feeling great right now. Riding high, he's got that, that adrenaline pumping. He's feeling this action. Bishop Sullivan really getting into a groove as we move along here. There's the snap. Dessou looking up field and caught and touchdown. Beautiful, beautiful catch by Tavion Land. And the tank runneth over for Mr. Tavion Tank Land. Watch this here as you see. Shotgun, four receivers, Dessou's gonna fire it. That post route's been there all day long as he goes over the top of the outstretched safety. That's number two, Josh Job. Beautiful. Goes over the top of him. Remember earlier he went underneath and Job delivered a killer hit on Lamb, but Lamb said, I got the last laugh on that one. This is the first, this is the first time one of the teams has been up by 
two whole possessions, basically. They 28 to 14, Bishop Sullivan. That's what they wanted before this first half ended. They wanted to get out to a good lead. And now this makes Cheshire Academy's job that much harder at this point. Their defense is going to have to get back on point, but their offense is really going to have to. You saw the coach react in there. And here again, the replay on that pass. Look at this, just up, over. I mean, he throws it over the defenders. You see the coach, there's the react. <laughs> and that, I mean, I don't blame him. We had the same reaction up here, and it's not even, we're not even the coaches for that team. No, and uh, you see the passing attack. There's really explosive plays here out of Bishop Sullivan in the running game, in the passing attack for them and now 28 14 lead they were down just to score not too long ago they've scored three times in the blink of an eye great work and there's chris scott bishop sullivan head coach again he's a man on a mission and he's he's, he's executing that mission to perfection so far well and the has been the guy that's been orchestrating it for him for 216 total yards of offense wow. 116 through the air 100 on the ground he has been a difference maker to quarterback spot whereas we've seen Cheshire with two capable guys, but they haven't settled in on just one guy and gotten those explosive plays from either Camus or kick. Martino. It is up. It is back. Gets it around the 25. And, well, the ball. Hold on. We got some whistles. Called a fair catch. Chris Argus again with the fair catch there. Wait. Waiting to see if the ref has a call here. Oh, no, okay. They've gone away from the onside and squib kick opportunities. I think that's benefiting them, actually, in the long run. And, I mean, the, again, they stepped away from it after having to take the kick from almost their own end zone. That's very true. I think maybe that was the wake-up call they needed at that point. And now you wonder, if you're Coach Deitman, are you content to run the clock out and get to halftime, or, or is it important to get a score here on the board to stay within one touchdown? I mean, for intermission. morale's sake, you may want to try and get that, that extra point or that extra touchdown. Oh, beautiful catch, and he's gone. Holy wow, look at that. What a pass, taken off down the field, and again, again, Bryce Sebastian, a key player for the Cheshire offense. Look at that, I mean, that beautiful. He caught it in perfect position. Nobody could stop him. Oh, well, Kamun said, you know what? My man Bryce Sebastian's had only one touch in his first half. I'm he got fix nine that. yards. I'm going to fix that. <laughs> Absolutely right. Goes 70 yards to pay dirt. And uh, man, oh, man, he just, he was gone on that play. And Coach Dykeman said, I'm not going to halftime down two touchdowns. I'm going to make yeah. this a one-score game. He answered game. your question as soon as you asked it. Boston College, Connecticut, Syracuse, <laughs> and Temple are on him for a reason, as we see on that play. And Kamun actually took a, took a decent hit on that he throw. Did. Got up from that wicked pass rush of the Crusaders, spearheaded by Dante Burke. Here's the kick. Oh, blocked. Oh. I think that was number two, Mondo Walker, that, that I think knocked that one down. He's fired up out there. Wow. You know what? They get that touchdown. But Bishop Sullivan, no, no, no. Not in our house. Ooh. Special teams paying off for the Crusaders. We wondered about it, and we, we still are wondering about it, but it keeps them up eight. As opposed to seven, that could be Beautiful. very pivotal late in this game should we have a close one. All right, here we go. We're going to get a look on it here. And, oh, I mean, just smothered it. Just smothered it. Fantastic. Fantastic special teams work by Bishop Sullivan there. I thought going to this game, we'd have a, a lower scoring game, maybe a 21-13, 24-14 type of game. We already got 48 points, and we're not even at halftime yet. This has been topsy-turvy. A lot of different momentum swings as uh, a high scoring game. And both defenses are used to lower scoring games. So you wonder, again, fatigue, second half, which defense might may tire out here? Because right now, this is a... This is a marathon game, not a sprint. I mean, you still got just shy of two and a half minutes left. That's enough time for somebody to get back up on that board and score again. No question. And I mean, we, saw, we saw Bishop Sullivan with that 68 nothing win previously. Uh, this looks to be another high-scoring day for Bishop Sullivan, but Cheshire not letting him get too far away from him. Wow, that kick was long and low, but way, way back past the 10 even. And bringing it back gets to the 30 about before he gets just smothered. Well, the one thing we've always heard about undefeated teams is you never know how good an undefeated team is because they haven't lost. And Cheshire's showing here, you get down two scores, there's no need to panic. We haven't been here before this year, but we've got a quality program. We're not going to just, 
you know, pack our bags up and go home. We came down here six hours to be in for a battle to the very finish. And uh, this Crusaders team, they've gone all over the, the East Coast so far this year. They've played a team in Florida. They've still got to play IMG Academy down in Florida, who they had a thriller with a year ago. So uh, they know about going on the road and, and facing some adversity themselves. They've had some injuries, too. Looks like we sent Mar it looks like Martinez went off the field. And we're bringing out Jenkins again. And Jenkins with the ball, trying to get through that line. Not much, maybe one, two yards. You know, I'd be content if I'm Chris Scott to go to halftime up eight. However, I said that for, for Coach Dykeman, you wondered if he would try to get a score. The thing is, Bishop Sullivan's up eight here, and they might have a chance down the field to get a score here. I think second down is going to tell us a lot here. If it's third and long, they might just run it down. If they get some yardage, they might go for a touchdown. Oh, there's the fake handoff again. Throws it. Oh, at the 40, though. And that looks like, I think that's going to move the chains for him. The eighth completion for Dassault today. No, Six third different down. receivers have caught a pass for them. And there's the throw, big, long bomb from Dassault. Oh, just through the hands. That's a great play, though, of playing the ball, not the man, by number 17 of Cheshire Academy, Christos Argus. So many times you see young defenders get caught up with playing the man, not the ball, but he stays hip to hip with Chapman, doesn't mug him, he plays the football and deflects it. Now it's fourth down and a decision to make here, either go for it or punt it. Looks like they're gonna go for it. Beautiful coverage there by Cheshire. And again, Argus being, Argus being a difference maker for their defense. And the Cats taking a timeout now, fourth and one. Exciting going into the half even. Well, and that could be critical for the defense because you get the ball back, uh, you gotta, you got to act quickly. But you see just a long, high arcing pass there. But again, he, just a wonderful job of not putting his hands on the defender because if you do so and you push him, that's pass interference, fresh set of downs for the Crusaders, and they have the ball in enemy territory. He was very smart about his coverage there. He got his hand around the receiver, not on him, and he managed to get it just enough in the way so that it muddles up that catch. And now he's still going to go for it, it looks like. Well, and I don't fault them a ton because a lot of coaches have the philosophy, if you can't get a yard, you don't deserve the win here, fourth and one. <laughs> they are up eight, and Cheshire just used its second timeout. So if they get a stop, they only have one left before the half. And there's the handoff. Takes off, run and break. Oh, brought down. They definitely got that yard. Stop shy of the 50. Martinez. Great job of Martinez. Again, he didn't tippy toe it. He hit it full blast there, full speed. That's the way to run the football on fourth and one. You have to go, run behind those blockers. Don't stop until they stop you. You don't want to think one, you want to think end zone. Regardless if you need one, you need 12 inches, you need whatever you need. You want to think beyond that. There's a snap, runs out right, brought down at the 45. They are now in Cheshire's territory with just under a minute to go. And again, they have all three timeouts here. I'm surprised they're not using one of them here with, with under 50 seconds to stop the clock. Didn't get out of bounds. 41 seconds at the snap. Throws it out right, catches it down around the 40. No, incomplete. Oh, so oh they're going to say he actually stayed in oh, bounds. Oh, okay, so all right. Another, another ref saying he caught, he caught it. He was able to he brought it down inside. Great job of keeping his balance because yeah. it looked like that was going to be incomplete. And Absolutely. But it's smart he gets to, I mean, they throw it to the outside. That stops the clock for him, allows him to move on. They don't need to use those timeouts until they absolutely have to. 9 to 18 now for 120 yards for Dassault through the air. And Chuck, oh, Dassault taking off. Oh, but no, the Cheshire offense, defense, excuse me, saw it. I think, I think they're starting to get wise to this to this Dassault uh, plan. Well, now you, you have to slant over to play the edges because he's really wanting to take off on, be it read plays or just own quarterback number keeper plays. And now uh, timeout for Bishop Sullivan. That'll be their first use. So they still have two left with 29 seconds before the break. And I think what you're going to see is either a shot deep down the field or something to the sideline. 
uh, be it an out pattern, something of that nature, so that the clock stops. Because if you throw it in the middle of the field and get tackled, you're going to burn a second time out here. And really without a, a true, consistent kicking weapon, a field goal may not be in play for the Crusaders. For a lot of teams, it would be. So they're, they're looking to get touchdown here as opposed to try to get three on the board. I would think. They haven't tried. If they can uh, get it close enough, they may go ahead and just give it a shot. But you're right. They haven't I feel tried like, too many field goals this I year. Feel like you're, I feel like you're right. I feel like the plan is going to be we need to get it in the end zone, make it as easy as possible for that extra point rather than chancing three. Only way I think they kick a field goal is that it's within the 15-yard line and they're, they're really running out of time. And uh, even then they may go for it. Now, here we go again. 29 seconds left on the clock. There's the snap to Sue back. Oh, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. It takes off through the line and gets brought down. It's Cheshire Academy uh, defense. They are starting to really get on a roll now. They're shutting down to Sue. Well, and again, you see coming off the edge there, keep an eye on number 11. That is Bryce Sebastian. He's had a sack already in this ballgame. Just caught the 70-yard touchdown pass. He came right around there completely unimpeded, forcing DeSue to take off. He had nowhere to go otherwise. I mean, Bryce Sebastian, not a guy he wants to try and just dodge. You can see the concerned look. Everybody's watching. Again, this is an exciting game. We were hoping for a, a great game between these two teams, and they're not letting us down. Lots of action, high impact. We've seen some big hits. Uh, you, you've got some future Saturday stars, and there might be even a couple of Sunday football players in this game. You never know. Taraji Mitchell has made his presence felt, and the likes of Bryce Sebastian and Chase Kinsley come to mind for Cheshire. Kinsley with that pick six and touchdown catch early on in the ball game. First two scores for the Cats, and they're trying to claw their way back in this game down eight. 21 seconds left on the clock. So you got to be thinking, what do I need to do to do to get us back on a roll, get us past this line? Oh, there's oh 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 Sebastian again, but he gets the ball off, thrown out of bounds. And the Cheshire coach up is wanting intentional grounding. Doesn't look they're going to get it as he was still back there in the pocket. And a great pursuit by that defensive front again, as you see there's a linebacker coming free. That's Sebastian. Sebastian they moved him again. on the other side to his uh, they had him on the blind side on the play before. Now he's coming off the right edge. And now it is fourth down, and this is pretty much the old uh, chuck and heave play here. You throw it down the field and hope somebody catches it in the end zone. If it's your guy, you get points. If not, it's the end of the half. Here we go, 15 seconds left, fourth and eight. DeSue falls back, throws it to the right. Beautiful catch, steps out of bounds, perfect. That will keep them in this drive. Wait. How about the balance and the footwork of Tank Lynn today? Remember, he got drilled first play from scrimmage today, didn't lose the football, had that nice sideline catch earlier. He has just been, uh, his concentration and focus today has been exceptional. Excellent time management here by the Crusaders. 11 seconds left. Starting at the 27 here. And for the snap, here it comes to Sue. Oh, looks to throw, fakes it, and brings it back, and almost intercepted. So close to being intercepted by Davis Tanner. I mean, sorry, Tanner Davis, excuse me. A six foot, 285 pound junior defender, and that back into that secondary is it's very dangerous. You got Kinsley, who's had a pick six, Job, who's a big time recruit, and Davis wanting to say, hey, I can play some football too. <laughs> Absolutely. You saw the frustration, he knew he was that close on that interception. A lot of passes thrown in this first half. 21 by my count for DeSue. Not sure the Crusaders expected to air it out 40 plus times today, but they're on the track to do so. Five seconds left. This very well could be the last play of the half. Here's the snap. DeSue falls back, airs it out, and caught! Oh. Touchdown, Bishop Sullivan! Beautiful! That man again, the land of tank. Absolutely, you don't. You, I, I think at this point we'd have to call it a, a blitzkrieg by tank. I mean, just moving, moving down there, getting open. I mean, he's plowing right through people. You know, the first game of the year at the, the Sportsplex, they played American Heritage out of Florida, and he was just 
unbelievable at cornerback, playing the, the short passes and tackling. And today he's just been so impressive on offense. And they missed the extra point, but still 34-20. Absolutely. What an exciting first half. Bishop Sullivan. 34-20, winning this against Cheshire Academy here in Virginia Beach. It has been amazing. Stay tuned for more game time on your view after the break. With On Demand from Cox Advance TV, there's more exciting entertainment available on your TV than ever before. Hit movies and hot new releases, tons of free TV shows, concerts and music videos, and access to huge libraries of premium channel series, movies, and more. Press the On Demand button on your remote and you're ready to go, all on your schedule, right at home. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Reliability. For some, it's in their nature. You can almost take their behavior for granted. Always there, ever faithful. Sort of like how you expect your internet connection to be. Total reliability. With a whole lot of speed. That's Cox High Speed Internet. With access to the fastest in-home Wi-Fi. The speed you need today and tomorrow, right by your side. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us here on Game Time on your view for Cheshire Academy versus Bishop Sullivan Academy. It has been a heck of a game so far. 34-20 just in the first half. It's been exciting. Can't wait for the second half, but let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Right. He's 
intercepted Dom Hampton. Let's go. Third and one with 153 remaining. So the play of the game coming here. Hand off Thomas. First down, Centennial. Still on his feet, breaks through the pile. Thomas is on the run. Touchdown, Centennial. And you take a look there, the sights and sounds from Arizona. St. Thomas Aquinas took on Centennial in that action. We got more coming up here, Bishop Sullivan versus Cheshire Academy. Make sure you stay tuned for game time, game time on your view after the halftime. If there's one thing we love, it's watching TV. But did you know you can also watch on the go with TV Everywhere? It's included at no extra charge as part of your Cox TV subscription. Watch live TV and on-demand content anywhere. Your favorite shows, movies, sports, and more on network websites or by downloading TV network apps to your tablet or phone. On the go? Keep watching with TV Everywhere. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. Fridays and Saturday nights here is like religion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like it's God and then it's football. For those three hours on a Friday night, everyone put everything aside. Whether it's race, whether it's religion, you put your own pride to the side, you put everything to the side, and everyone in the community comes together for that Friday night. Sports in America is one of those rare things that brings it everybody together. When those lights come on, it doesn't matter what's been going on at home, at church, in the community. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just an amazing experience just to see the amount of fan support and just the camaraderie that Friday nights bring. And that's why sports is such a valuable tool to society, to America. children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Versus Bishop Sullivan, the first half of this game has been amazing. It has been incredibly exciting. We've seen lots of high-impact offense and defense and more throwing than we thought we were going to see from Bishop Sullivan. For sure, Sean, and the thing is that this is Game, this game has developed into a track meet, which is sort of what Bishop Sullivan wanted with Jake Lowe being out for the year, their main bell cow running the football. And Tyler DeSue has shown just what a dynamic quarterback he is, running and throwing the football. They've gotten outside the hashes and made plays. They've made plays down the middle of the field. And give credit to Cheshire. They've hung tough here. they got a pick six early in the game, but they've been able to open it up a little bit at times too. I think they have to control the line of scrimmage better to win this ball game because that's ultimately their way of getting back in this game and winning it. Absolutely, absolutely. It's been a ton of offense. It's been a ton of fun. It's been an exciting game, and we were hoping it would be. And we've still got more to go. we still got another half. 34-20, <laughs> to 20, though, Crusaders leading. That is quite the mountain for Cheshire to try and climb. Well, and as we watch some of the highlights, the thing that really strikes me, Sean, is that they, on the year, 60 points allowed for the for the Cats on defense coming in. 34 points for Bishop Sullivan. Look at this big-time play by DeSue. What a scramble getting away from multiple guys down the field. A big-time 29-yard scramble. And you see they now go tight, and DeSue will punch it in for the first Crusaders TD. But the Cats would fight back. Absolutely. The Cats fighting back. We're taking a look at some of the first-half highlights here. And you see they run the football here. A big-time play by Martino. That's Jared Martino, a 33-yard scamper here as they get inside Bishop Sullivan territory, getting to that second and third level of defense. So essential, but the Crusaders would fire back with that air attack. DeSue going deep down the field, and who's he got? Armani Chapman. Beautiful catch there. Looking over the shoulder, we saw that one. That just, I mean, an amazing catch. Couldn't ask for anything better from Armani Chapman. This one really surprised me as you see that the pressure just really 
bottling up that quarterback there, Martino, then in for Josh Commune, and then the Crusaders would start to get momentum here. You think they might pull away here as Martinez runs in 21 yards for a touchdown, but we would see Cheshire come right back and say, uh-uh, we're going to hang in there to the end of the half. Yeah, they're not going to be put to bed that easily. They're going to try and stick around, but Dessou not going to let it happen either. His team, he's going to try and carry them to victory on his shoulders if necessary. I mean, look at this run right down the field, struggling to catch him, and we even see the referee get wiped out. He goes down before Dessou does. The 47-yard run for Dessou has got 102 yards on the ground, 159 through the air, and here's more of those passing yards as he finds Tavion Tankland. Two touchdown receptions for him, but here comes Bryce Sebastian. And he's taken off up the field again. A beautiful run there. And there was nobody who was going to catch him. I mean, he was wide open, and he did about as the best you could one. And that's one of the reasons he's so highly sought after. Oh, for sure. He's got offers from multiple schools, BC, UMass, a bunch looking at him. And then that last play to half, Tank Land catches it over a defender. Two touchdown catches. He might be the player to have as good as DeSue has been. And if this first half is any indication, the second half is going to be even more exciting. So stick around with us for more game time on your view. If there's one thing we love, it's watching TV. But did you know you can also watch on the go with TV Everywhere? It's included at no extra charge as part of your Cox TV subscription. Watch live TV and on-demand content anywhere. Your favorite shows, movies, sports, and more. On network websites or by downloading TV network apps to your tablet or phone. On the go? Keep watching with TV Everywhere. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. Watch the newest movies instantly with Movies on Demand from Cox. My parents are squatting in an abandoned building on the Lower East Side. They were homeless for three years before that, which is pretty much how they raised us. <laughs> Let's go! We ain't like other people. We got a fire burning in our bellies. The Glass Castle. Movies on Demand from Cox. Just go to Channel One and choose all new movies. You. Superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. Anywhere. It's that easy. To order NBA League Pass, call 844 371 3529. On your view as we check out Cheshire Academy, Bishop Sullivan, 34-20. Bishop Sullivan leading at the half. And we're going to take a look at the upcoming schedules for both these teams here coming up. Well, for Cheshire. Sean, you got Royal Imperial and Worcester Academy. Royal Imperial got beat pretty soundly by Bishop Sullivan just a week or two ago, and Worcester sitting at under 500. So I think it's very possible they finish up with about eight wins or nine wins on the season. They're in position to do so. And now we'll take a look at Bishop Sullivan's upcoming schedule, IMG Academy and Riverdale Baptist. IMG will be on the road this time going down to Florida. Last year they were leading in the fourth quarter and lost it late. Riverdale Baptist will be a really good test into the year coming off that IMG game. Could go either way. Absolutely, and both of them still have a lot coming up in this game, so stick around for us. we got plenty more action coming up on Game Time on your view after the break. If there's one thing we love, it's watching TV. But did you know you can also watch on the go with TV Everywhere? It's included at no extra charge as part of your Cox TV subscription. Watch live TV and on-demand content anywhere. Your favorite shows, movies, sports, and more. On network websites or by downloading TV network apps to your tablet or phone. On the go? Keep watching with TV Everywhere. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new Contour from Cox. 
weekend is about us. Every good girl has a bad side. Put this on. This is a mosquito net. Then maybe you'll catch something. Yeah, man. Girls Trip. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote. Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. The, uh, the boardwalk in Virginia Beach, beautiful Virginia Beach. Oh, it's a wonderful resort area, and a lot of people come to Virginia Beach to visit vacation time a year, and it's just lovely weather. It's just a gorgeous day for football as uh, we're getting ready to turn the calendar from October to November. Oh, it's a great time of year. It's a wonderful time here. It's football time. I can't ask for a better time than that. So we're waiting now. Both, both teams getting ready to start the second half. It's been an exciting game so far. We've had a lot going on. Uh, and one of the keys to success for Bishop Sullivan, something we didn't think was going to happen, they threw the ball a lot more than we were expecting. Well, they didn't have had some really timely third down conversions. And that's been huge for them. And I think that's going to be the key for the second half, Sean, is stopping them on third down if you're the Cats. Absolutely. Oh, and by the way, this week on Your View's High School Football Recruiting Podcast, Barton Simmons from 24-7 Sports explains how players are going to get ranked. Andrew J. Bone from Rivals.com breaks down Alabama's recruiting class. Jeff Palermo previews the Your View Louisiana Game of the Week with Walker versus Live Oak and looks at the Louisiana High School playoff picture. All that and more on this week's episode of Over the Middle Podcast. Check it out at YourView.com. As we said, we're getting ready for that second half to kick off. You see the teams, I mean, Bishop Sullivan gonna wanna come out of the gate and stay exciting. They, they kicked off in the first half, so they're gonna get the ball back. Well, ordinarily you always say coming out of the break is uh, the, this first possession is so critical, but the way these possessions have been, have been going back and forth that it may not be that imperative at the end of the day because you could see that this game be uh, 50 points might take it to win it. I mean, it You're really might. absolutely right. I mean, I didn't think I'd ever say that coming into today given how both of these defenses have performed to this point in the season, but we're seeing a lot of wide open play, uh, not a lot of chance for the defensive fronts to make those plays down the middle of the field and tackles because we're seeing the passing games get involved. Again, you combine the two passing yardages right now for, for these two teams, we're looking at right now 274 yards of passing between wow. Bishop Sullivan and Cheshire Academy. In a 54-point game. <laughs> that's that's unheard of for, for these two offenses that like to use the run to establish the pass. And in the case of Bishop Sullivan, we thought they would go to the air if given the opportunity. But the way Cheshire's defense came out that first play, or first series, excuse me, a pick six, that kind of would make a lot of teams leery of throwing the ball. But Chris Scott's always got that attack, attack, attack mindset, and his team has not been afraid to air it out. They did go to DeSue for a bit more on the run, uh, kind of back-to-back. -back. Cheshire started to get wise to it, and then all of a sudden back to the air, back to the air, making Cheshire regret moving up on him because all of a sudden you're leaving guys open down the field for DeSue. Well, the two concerns for Coach Zeitman were, First off, how do we contain DeSue on the edge? And now, secondly, how do we stop these playmakers on the outside? Chapman, Jones, Land. They have so many different receivers that can beat you on all the plays on the route tree, all the patterns on the route tree. So uh, they have to find a way to get pressure up front to really negate the play action and also keep DeSue from escaping the pocket. Absolutely, and here we go. Looks like we are about ready to kick off and start the second half of this game, which, I mean, it's been incredibly exciting already. I can't wait to see the second half. I'm running out of uh, lines on my stat sheet here. I should have brought a second one if I knew there was going to be this many plays. It's, again, Bishop Sullivan's offense is very fast, very loose. They ran in the first half a total of 46 plays from scrimmage. You run 80, 90 plays from scrimmage, often you're going to win a game in high school football. That's college-like with Oregon and teams like that, you think about with those type of numbers. And here comes the kick. Good kick down the field, about to the goal line, and they're going to take it. Here he comes, running right up field. Oh, wrapped up and brought down by number 10. Uh, by, by, I'm sorry, yeah, number 10. That's Martino. We highlighted him in the open as a playmaker on offense, running the ball, throwing the ball. And now he's even getting involved in the third dimension of the game, the often forgotten about special teams. And here we go to line up, and we will get back on offense with Bishop Sullivan. And we will see what DeSue has up his sleeve before this second half. There's the snap, hands it off. Plows right through that, right through that line. And down he goes after a decent gain there by Martinez. Yeah, Martinez, early on, you were wondering if he was in a groove running the ball, but I think that touchdown got him going and 
He's starting to get seven, eight-yard chunks. Yeah. and He got a nine-yard gain off of that That's going to make it even tougher to stop Desue and these weapons on the outside. 61 now on seven attempts for him on the, on the ground. Looking for the pass. Big, long throw. Overthrown, though. It's the one thing in Desue's game he's going to have to polish up on when he gets to the next level is just having a little bit better touch on some of those downfield throws. He's missed connection with Chapman a couple of times, but it, it's, it's something that's very correctable. And, and again, he's committed to Maryland, and you see, we've seen why in this game. He's been a key to success for this team, the run game, the passing game. I mean, he's had beautiful fakes. He's had, I mean, he has been a weapon they have not been able to overall contain. Well, you can run uh, option with him. He can throw, make all the throws, deep, short, and intermediate, and he's just got a lot of tools that the, you can utilize. The one thing, like I said, just getting that deep ball accuracy, just a little bit touched up, and I think that can happen in the college game for him. Yeah, Martinez has taken the run there, and a first down for the Crusaders as they move the chains down the field. And this steady progress down the field. Oop, high snap there. Hands it off again. Cutting out to the left, and brought down. Cheshire knows they need more activity from those outside backers as they get on the outside runs, whether it be a jet sweep or a toss play. And Zachary Spencer starting to get more involved in this game. He's listed as a linebacker slash offensive lineman and uh, someone that can put them in second and third long situations where it takes away the run game unless Tasu is the one run on a broken down pass. And now, oh, we got a flag on the play. Dead ball, false start. Offense, number 11. Five-yard penalty, second down. False start on Keontae Jenkins. That was awkward as the Crusaders were clapping initially, thinking it was offsides, but uh, he was drawn offsides because one of the offensive linemen for Bishop Sullivan moved first, so that's always going to get called false start. Referees making a good call on that one. And now you wonder about the uh, pass play here on second down. Again, they have four wide receivers here, all very dangerous in open space. And there's the handoff to Jenkins, cutting out right. Gets by. Oh, good run. Good game. Good. Oh. Wow. He refused to go down when he, by all rights, should have. <laughs> Managed to squeeze out some more yardage before going down. Keontae Jenkins, the outside run plays, as you see right there, he comes across on the jet sweep. He is very, very elusive. Look at that. On the move in open space. And. He's a guy they're using a lot more on offense. Beginning of the year, I think the plan was just to play him pretty much strictly on defense, but due to some things that have happened as the season went along, they see that we can't have this guy sideline on offense. And the snap. Two falling back, throws it up high and long. Oh, overthrown again. And he, like you said, he needs to work on that fine-tuning on that. He, unfortunately, as we're going on here, it seems they're getting a little more ahead of the, of, the, of the receivers. Well, the one thing about that is the way he threw that is he's not putting his receivers in a bad place or his team where it could get intercepted. So right. it's just a matter of just getting a little bit of timing down. And he might be the best deep ball thrower or just thrower in general at the quarterback position in the class of 2018 in Virginia right now. And, it's been, it's been a state that for many, many years has produced so many great quarterbacks. When you think of Michael Vick and Tyrod Taylor and E.J. Manuel, the list goes on and on and on. And Tyler DeSue hoping to one day be in that company. There's the handoff. And doesn't get far. Martinez brought down pretty quickly. Those inside run plays have not had a ton of success except for when they send four or five receivers down the field and they have to start chasing and then DeSue can run a little bit through the middle, but uh, in terms of their backs, they haven't had as much success on the run plays through the middle as on the outside. And DeSue trying to get things going again. Third down conversion they need here, right at half field basically. Break, oh, takes off running, and first down and more for Tyler DeSue. How many times has he converted a third down? I think it's the last three, either with his arm or his legs, and we see a flag after the play. It might be a personal foul here, but you see they fake the jet, the chains, and then, and then there's ball, the Sue there. Martinez, eight. they they all he swayed his way, and then that opened up the middle as they're trying to get the defense going from silent to silent to open up those plays so through the foul, through the gut. Hands to the face. Hands to the face. On eight, which On team? Eight. Okay, then we're gonna have first and ten. Pick up about 18 yards there, Sean. Got 120 yards rushing today. Wow. Dead ball, personal foul. Hands to the face, number eight. Offense, 15 yard penalty. Uh, First down. E.J. Johnson. 
That is, that's rough. That's rough on a great play like that. I mean, they've been flagged six times this afternoon for 50 yards, and those are the things that they cannot afford to have in some of those later games in the season against IMG Academy and Riverdale Baptist if they hope to be successful. So You can see some frustration there from Coach Scott, and you can't blame him. I mean, it essentially took away almost everything Tyler DeSue just gained there. Fortunately for them, it's a fresh set of downs. Now here we go. They've got to shake this off. They've got to they've got to refocus themselves and get going. That was a beautiful play to get their momentum going again. That kind of penalty though can suck it right back at you. There's a long throw, high, high throw, and oh, but there's a flag on the play. Well, we talked about it yeah. earlier. Play the ball, not the man. That time Argus got some hand action on Chapman, and that's going to probably be pass interference here. As he he did a good job for most of that until the pass very end where he got his hands on defense number 17, 15 yard penalty, first down. Absolutely pass interference. I mean, it was it was plain as day. Uh, he just, had, as good as he did it before, he messed up there. And that's a shame for them because it takes away what they just got out of that penalty. You see that left hand yeah. on the back of number five, Chapman, there. That's going to get called uh, more times than not. And it's a good idea by Bishop Sullivan and, and the offensive play calling staff there to take that shot down the field because they they were really sucking the defense in to, to play that the jet plays on the run as well as to mobility and uh, Chapman one-on-one -on -one in vertical situations he's he's a home run guy here we go there's the snap to to sue falling back looking out to his right throws it up and overthrown again Good coverage down the field as we're seeing these uh, defensive backs starting to play a little bit better, that, that deep ball. We saw towards the end of the half a couple of uh, broken plays for the secondary that I know Coach Zeitman had to be very upset about. And now we're going to see it. Here it comes, and there it goes. I mean, maybe a, a foot or two in front of him at that point. It's just frustrating, unfortunately, for the receiver, too. He wants desperately to bring it down for him, but there's just not much you can do. Uh-oh. All right, and we're going to take a break real quick, but stick around because we got tons more action. Cheshire Academy, Bishop Sullivan, more from them right here on Game Time on your view. So stick around after the break. With Cox High Speed Internet, you get access to super fast in home Wi Fi to power all your devices and do the things you love online. And now, when you're traveling, you have free access to the nation's largest Wi Fi network with over 500,000 hotspots, so you can stay connected in places such as New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, and many more. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com slash learn. Academy, Bishop Sullivan, and they are going at 34-20. Bishop Sullivan still leading, looking to add to that lead, though. Second and 10. There's the snap to Tyler Jesu. Long throw. Oh! Oh! Right. <laughs> they both trip over each other. Near connection as Val Johnson, VJ, was, he was open on that play. He beat his defender at the very end of that play as he broke free from him and deep ball. Ah, I mean, it was mm, just outside of his reach. First time we've called his name today is it's usually been Chapman, Jones, or Land, but I uh, use four or five different wide receivers. That's probably the strength of this Bishop Sullivan team. It's wide receiver and defensive backs. Their skill position, they are loaded at that spot. And I get a little debris there off the field. Tyler DeSue, single back. And takes off running. There goes Tyler DeSue through the line. Ran it on through, pushed that whole line backwards, but. It's a good job by that line of Kyle Young and company to clog that and not let him get to that second and third level where the linebackers and defensive backs aren't there to make the play because they're worried about those wide receivers and that threat of the pass. Fourth and four. And I mean, we've seen traditionally with them, I mean, you got to think they're going to go for it, of course. I would think so here. It's, it's a little bit out of their field goal kicker's range. And uh, with a two score lead, if you don't get it, it doesn't really hurt you because they still have to drive 70 yards to get within a score of you should they score a touchdown. Tyler DeSue, again, hopefully hopefully trying to get this team back rolling. He wants to command an even larger lead. Hands the ball off to, ooh! Martinez, it looked like, who just got scooped up. 
Great stop by Jared Martino, showing why we touched on him in the open. He's fired up, making that play. They were ready for the basic. That almost looks like a jet, but it's in the backfield he hands it off, and Martino just played the outside run perfectly. He was right in right position to make the stuff. Excuse me, it was Jenkins. That was Jenkins on the carry there, and I just he couldn't get anywhere, swallowed up by that line. And uh, I was thinking they might go to the air there on a shorter pass route because they didn't need a touchdown there, but something underneath a bubble or a quick hitch. And not the case there as that defense gets a much needed stop here and a chance for Cheshire to really make things tight and interesting here. Jenkins has been doing some work for them. And I think they were talking, they were trying, like you said, that quick slip offense he has, be able to dodge those with defenders. And unfortunately, just didn't work for him. That team got wrapped right up. And now we got another. Just looks like uh, something to do with his back pad. Yeah, it looks like it's an equipment situation, so they're going to have someone replace Armani Chapman for the moment as uh, they'll walk another defender to take his place as they've got uh, Walker, Jones, Land, and Jenkins on the back end here. And there's a snap. Cheshire, oh, slips that tackle. Cuts around and stopped at about the 25. Look at Taraja Mitchell, though. Sideline to sideline, he is moving better than he did as a junior. I've really been impressed with him going back to the start of the season and how well he's become a guy in coverage and going from sideline to sideline because we know what a great run stuffer he is at the linebacker spot. When you're the receiver and you get your hands in the ball, you see it coming to you, you catch it, you cradle it, you turn, and you've got Taraji Mitchell looking right at you from about two feet away. I don't know what you plan to do at that point other than just hope, man, I hope this doesn't hurt too much. Well, that was something that, that he was a little bit weaker in a year ago in terms of making plays and pass coverage, but he's he's worked on it and he's gonna be a real asset to that Ohio State defense in a year in Columbus. And the front, oh. He manages to find a hole, gets a gain, but stop quickly. That doesn't feel good if you're Martino to get hit by Burke and Mitchell. They combine there, and uh, you wonder if with the pace of play here, Bishop Sullivan a little bit quicker on offense than Cheshire is. Fatigue starting to send a little bit here. It's a little warmer day here, the long bus trip. You wonder if they've got the legs here to make a rally. Now yeah, here we go again, and they again third and six already for Cheshire Academy. There's a snap, quick throw. Oh, off the fingers and no, almost caught. Who almost picked up by Bishop Sullivan right there. That was dangerous. And we've only had one turnover in this game, which was that interception by Kinsley back in the first quarter as we watch it again. Commune here operating with the one back in the backfield. Just a quick right. underneath throw and it just pops in the air. Nearly picked by Mitchell as he makes a great diving effort right to off try the, to get it. Right off the hands of Argus. I mean, just bounced right off him and in a dangerous position. But goes about 10 feet in the air. Everybody holds their breath. That's why teams run that tip drill because that ball pops up in the air come up with interception, it can change the game where Bishop Sullivan had gotten it, perhaps putting There's it away. A snap and the kick. And coming down around the 45, 40, rolling out around probably the 38. And we've got more action coming up between Bishop Sullivan and Cheshire Academy, so stick around for game time on your view after the break. Watching TV the way you want all starts with having the right connections. Cox High Speed Internet and Cox TV. At home, you get access to the fastest in-home Wi-Fi to stream seamlessly on multiple devices. Away from home, you can access more than 300,000 Wi-Fi hotspots, so you can watch a variety of TV shows online or by downloading your favorite TV network apps. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. We are back on game time on your view. Cheshire Academy taking on Bishop Sullivan here in Virginia Beach. And it looks like we have an injured player on the field. It's trying to. Yeah, it's number three. It's going to be uh, Tanner Davis. Oh. Remember, he had that one key play in the pass coverage back in the second quarter. And that puts them at one fewer guy to defend those receivers of Bishop Sullivan. So that could be really, really critical here as we move along. Hopefully, nothing too serious for that young man means more is on the shoulders of Job and some of his other defensive backs to contain the airstrikes of DeSue and these Crusaders. And the Crusaders with the ball again, looking to add to their lead. There's the snap, DeSue falling back, way back. It's an out to the right, ooh, right off the hands. Just bounce right off the hands of, of Jones. 
And DeSue was 11 of 22 in the first half. 0 of 5 to open up the second half. Hasn't gotten in a groove throwing the football just yet. Remember, had those two touchdown passes late in the second quarter to extend the lead for Bishop Sullivan. There's a the snap again. Takes the handoff, takes off through the line, breaks through, and gets almost shy at, just shy of the 50 to about the 48. Maybe even the 49. Good move by DeSue. I mean, the run, the throw isn't working for the moment, so let's mix it up. And again, they fake that handoff with Jenkins. It's not a pure jet sweep. It's basically a halfback play that appears to be a jet, doesn't line up as a receiver, and then DeSue showing the toughness up the middle. And the, ha the actual handoff that time, but that gets wrapped up quickly. Pretty much no gain there, it looks like. They've had a hard time running the ball between the tackles with their backs. DeSue's been the guy that's been their chain mover on the run plays from tackle to tackle, so. Fourth and one. Fourth and one, I think DeSue's gonna keep it here. Here we go, hands it off. And that first down achieved. I think Martinez, if I'm not mistaken, Martinez picks up the first down for his team. Strong job by those big boys for the Crusaders. Let's give them some love as you had uh, Tommy Sefcik and C.J. Scott, Coach Chris Scott's son, paving the way. You got to go off now. And because of the injury uh, that stopped the clock, that means number four has to run off for Cheshire Academy. I don't have a four on my roster. I don't know what you do either, but it's a quick know. substitution that stops the clock, but now we're back winding again. I'm trying to figure out who that mystery man is. Wherever he is, Cheshire Academy, hoping he can fill that gap there on defense. There's the snap, handoff again, breaks through the line, beautiful. And it looks like Jenkins taken off up the field and stopped. Oof. Stop at about the 15. The younger brother of Levante Taylor, a sophomore at Florida State, Keontae Jenkins saying, I can play on the football field just like Big Bro. We watch it here, they fake the jet sweep and it's Jenkins up the middle, running right behind the lineman there, Sevcic, and he picks up a healthy chunk of yardage. Artis him finally bringing him down. 34 on that carry. And there it is, touchdown. Crusaders, just like that, quick offense. It's the second of the day for Mike Martinez. He's got 12 rushes for 81 yards and two touchdowns. Jenkins with 10 carries for 109 yards rushing. Starting to wear down that Here Cheshire we Academy defense. We saw one of their key guys go Oh, off look at that hole. Whew. Just plows right through jet Jets between two defenders, right into the end zone, beautiful. <laughs> These offensive Beautiful. linemen have gotten stronger as the game has gone along. And usually you think of the run setting up the pass, but I think those big strikes through the air have enabled to get Bishop Sullivan some favorable situations with the running game. Oh, the kick was tipped. Let's go! Hey, so 40 20, Bishop Sullivan leading Cheshire Academy. And then increasing that lead. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned for more game time on your view after the break. know how it is you're busy and on the go and don't always know when there's a message on your home phone but Cox digital telephone readable voicemail has you covered it converts voicemail messages on your home phone to readable text and automatically sends them to your email address so you can check messages wherever you have email access on your computer tablet or smartphone learn more with the Cox discover more video series at cox.com learn Welcome back to game time on your view. Cheshire Academy struggling to catch up to Bishop Sullivan, 40 to 20. This is turning into a real lopsided affair. 325 yards rushing now for Bishop Sullivan to go with the 159 yards passing as their offense has been able to do pretty much whatever they've wanted to in this ball game after that interception on their first series of the game. That's the kickoff, caught it around the five and running it out. That's, oh man, he comes down right around the 25. Oh, flag on the play. Okay, guys. Got block in the back. Yeah, okay. Let's see what the officials call here. 
Return and return. Back. Illegal block in the back. Return team. Ten yard penalty. Spot of the foul. First down. And it's not the way you want to start this possession. That's going to be rough. That's going to it's going to start them. Well, I mean, really, in worse position they'd have than if it was a touchback. And the thing that, that's just really apparent to me is the, the running game has just been non-existent today for Cheshire. Just 24 yards on the ground, and they haven't maximized the touches for Sebastian. A little puzzled by that. Uh, he had a huge game in their latest win, and uh, I, I'm a little surprised that they haven't used him more on the ground to take some of the pressure off of Martino as well as their other quarterback. And Josh Commune, Martino can play either QB or running back, but now starting inside your own. 10 yard line, you have to be very careful you don't get a turnover because that could lead to a quick score for these Crusaders. Yeah, this is a dangerous position to be in. You're I mean, within 10 yards of your own end zone. You want to get the ball out of there quickly, as quickly as possible, but as safely as possible. You don't want to accidentally give it up that close to your end zone. There's a snap and he takes, a, oh, there's a hole. He's trying to get through, doesn't get far. That Bishop Sullivan defense was right on top of him. The hole was there. They noticed it, then they collapsed it quickly. And Martino playing probably the toughest defensive front he's seen all year long. The, the Crusaders have literally a scholarship player at every level of their defense, defensive line, linebacker, and defensive back. And in a couple of those levels at, at LB and DB, they have multiple scholarship players and just not giving them a chance to break a long run. Lining up again, Bishop Sullivan looking to just stop them right where they are and make an easy day for their offense. Falls back, throws it off to the left, caught. Beautiful, amazing throw on the run. And he's going to go down right at a, just shy of the 50 probably, but right around there. Beautiful. And that was Martino on that play. And look at that catch. Oh. Look at that, amazing. Gets the extra yards after the catch, right at the 50. Good to see Tanner Davis is backing up after he had that injury earlier in the quarter. And that's got to 41 yards. That's got to breathe some new life into this offense. Oh, for sure. And the thing is, now you have a little bit of a passing element that person, another defensive back there. They were blowing the box with eight, nine guys. Now you have to you can get a chance with the run play here. Oh, they were in that same go. play earlier, but it's a run this time. Heads off on up the left, tries to slip a tackle, goes down right at about the 50, maybe the 51, might have gained about a yard. Remember, Sean, they had that play earlier in the first half, and they threw off it, the, the handoff and then the end around with it. That time they run strictly for it, but the defense on the other side was ready for it as the corner and backers on the right side were there to sniff it out for no gain. Here they go, lining up again. Bishop Sullivan looking to stop them. Bishop Sullivan looking to stop this momentum that Cheshire's trying to gain here. Cheshire looking to build something. There's a snap, and he takes off. Coming up the field, tries to get past him, doesn't get too far, picks up about three. Taraji Mitchell right there in on the stuff there, as you see. Snap goes directly to Martino. He right gets away from Martino. Smith. But look at Mitchell. And also, we got to give a shout-out to Samarion Harold at freshman. Two sacks in his ball game, number 20. He's been flying all over the place, as you see. Uh, sort of walking gingerly off there for the Crusaders on defense. I believe that's going to be uh, number 16, Andre Hawkins. A little shaken up after that play. Looks like he's all right. Just may have either caught a cramp or got dinged a little hard. And again, here's the snap coming up. Commune falling back, looking up field. Oh, oh, little too high there. Little too high. Tanner Davis trying to get up there to it, but just needed a few more inches. It was dangerous though that tip. He had, to, he had coverage around him. It was that could have been a very dangerous interception. It really could have been here and now. Fourth down, they're going to send on the punting unit. Not going to try to chase the points here. Down 20. They'll punt it away and play some field position, hoping, hoping their defense can get some kind of takeaway to put their offense in scoring position. Tavion Land in the backfield awaiting that kick. And we'll see what they can do. 
Cheshire Academy. Oh, wait. Timeout, Cheshire Academy. All right. Timeout called by Cheshire Academy. 40 20 Bishop Sullivan leading and just an exciting game. But we've got lots more coming up, so stay tuned for more game time on your view after this break. You know how it is. You're busy and on the go and don't always know when there's a message on your home phone. But Cox Digital Telephone Readable Voicemail has you covered. It converts voicemail messages on your home phone to readable text and automatically sends them to your email address. So you can check messages wherever you have email access, on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Learn more with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. More than we got you. hundreds and hundreds of live games. A gorgeous spin. Get the full season. All season long. No sweat. Oh, you just want to watch your team. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got you. Anytime, anywhere. It's that easy. To order NBA League Pass, call 844-371-3529. Do that knowing that it could be a disastrous situation and a player for the Cats might pick it up and even score uh, is beyond me. If we watch it again, I think I don't think he got really got so much force as he just pitches it back. Let's watch it again here. You might be right. He yep, just decides that's a to pitch. throw You're it. Right. Lateral it over to Tank Land, who ordinarily would be a good situation, but not from inside your own 15. I don't think no. that's a good idea. <laughs> now, if you make a catch and you're inside the 12 and you got a guy tackling, yeah, I can see a little, little trick play razzle-dazzle work there, but... Uh, that didn't work out their way at all. That's uh, not great field position to start out with for the Crusaders here. But again, that 40-20 lead, and they probably feel like they have a little room to breathe at this point, work their way upfield. He's fortunate Land was there to get it. As he's been everywhere today. There's the handoff, trying to break through. Oh, just can't really seem to get through the line, not going down easily. But Martinez does eventually go down. He got stopped right there at the line, pretty much. This is where they miss Jake Lowe, because he's their grinder that can allow them to salt games away, and you're seeing that uh, defensive line for Cheshire really take away the inside run plays, the dives, the counters, anything of that nature, and really the success on the ground. And they've had a lot of it today. Over 300 yards rushing has been through Dessou and some things on the perimeter. And we had Dessou waiting for that snap. We'll see if he tries to mix it up again. Every time it seems like they've got things figured out, just Sue starts trying something different. There's a pass. Oh, oh, no! Off of Chapman's oh, hands, oh. and I think that was Ian Trenchard with the interception. Beautiful. We'll take another look at this. Sue gets the ball, looks around for his man, takes the shot. Just right off the hands. Good coverage there. Good cover by, coverage by Argus allowing that interception. And it just goes off the mitts of Chapman not not his most memorable sequence he's had some memorable plays in this ball game had that touchdown earlier on in the first half the 41 yarder but now a chance as we just said hey Cheshire get that defensive takeaway you can get back in this ball game an inch closer now they have to capitalize and get some points off this takeaway because if they don't with a quarter left to play down three scores it's going to be hard to get a comeback. They're in great field position right now on the 27 of Bishop Sullivan. This is a great place for their offense to take over, see what Commune and them can make happen at this point. And they got coming back a quarterback, and Martino in the backfield. He gets the pitch, but he's going to oh. throw. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's. Oh. They're saying it was a live ball, and it was a lateral. It looked like he was throwing to a lineman. Now, I wonder if he was an eligible receiver. He's got to check in if it was, but he, he was throwing to a lineman there on that play. Watch it again. You see they got Kamun back at quarterback, Martino in the backfield, using Kevin Bruce, the Princeton commit at linebacker at fullback. Pitch out, and that looks like it's a forward pass, not a lateral, but I would wonder if 72 was an eligible receiver. Well, it didn't work out for them, whatever their plan was. He's their was. left guard. <laughs> and again, another guy, maybe he's on your sheet that I don't have on mind. It's another mystery man. So we've got two of those for the Cats today. Yeah. Oh, good work there. Good work by the Cats. Chase Kinsley again. Kinsley has been one of their most reliable weapons on offense today. I see what uh, Coach Dykeman was talking about. Kinsley's ball skills are terrific. We, we, we've raved about the footwork of Tank Land on the other side for Bishop Sullivan, number one, and then number one for Cheshire Academy. 
Kinsley getting a pick six today, and he's catching the football with ease. He's just a natural at that wide receiver position. At 6'3", I think he's got a chance to play somewhere at the next level. He's got the size, the ball skills. What's not to like? And here we go again. They're looking to try and get back in this game, try and gain some kind of momentum, get back on the board, get closer to Bishop Sullivan. And there's a fumble on the play, but recovered. Commune recovers it. Not... It kind of a mixed bag here. We get a great catch by Kinsley, and then that fumble by Commune, and it just keeps going back and forth for the Cats. Don't believe they've had a turnover yet. I know Bishop Sullivan's had two off the top of my head here. Just uh, You have to be very careful with the football here. This is a golden opportunity to score here, and the uh, clock is running out here, so if they want to get a play or two off before the half, end of the quarter, they're going to have to act quickly. Under 30 seconds now. Here comes the snap. Commune. Throws it back to, oh, 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 man. And beautiful defensive play by Taraji Mitchell. Came right through, saw right through that plan and stops him way behind the line. That was just a smart play and an excellent job of Taraji Mitchell reading what the play was. He saw it was a toss. He comes flying in from the other side. What pursuit. That is why he's a top 50 prospect in the nation, my friends. And the Ohio State Buckeyes, Urban Meyer, they're excited about him coming to Columbus next year. 6'2", 247 pounds. The speed on that man is scary, but a, a vital player for them all around. That was incredible, and that's going to do it for the third quarter. And that's been exciting action. 40-20 still, the Crusaders leading. More coming up on game time on your view, so stick around after the break. children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back to game time on your view. Sean Hood, Matt, Matt, uh, we're seeing an exciting game here between Bishop Sullivan and Cheshire Academy. Uh, it's, it's been all over the place, kind of back and forth. I, I, I don't even, at this point, I'm not sure what's going to happen next. We've seen some crazy takeaways. We've seen some crazy turnovers, some amazing plays. And, oh, almost another interception there thrown by Commune. And right there, Sheridan Jones is saying, oh, I had one. I had a pick. You know, so these defensive close. backs are competitive. They want to beat each other when it comes to interceptions by season's end. And it's just a little slant pattern. And yeah. in Sheridan Jones' hands, he was trying to run before he had possession of it. Happened so many times, but nonetheless, it's a pass breakup. So he gets some kind of statistic there. Yeah, either way, you did your job and you did it well. Fourth and 19 for Cheshire Academy now. And they're going to go for it. I think you have to. A field goal doesn't help you. It's still a three-score game with a field goal. you got to go for it. Whoa, almost, almost got sacked there. That was Tank Land applying the pressure off the edge on a corner blitz. As Coach McClenney, Coach Gatlin and those defensive guys dialing up the, the pressure on fourth down. They have defensive backs that in, on an island one-on-one -on -one didn't get the job done, so why not send one of these DBs in on a blitz and he gets his hands on the passer as he throws it. Now they're going to take their ball. They're going to take the ball back. Bishop Sullivan is on their 24. And Bishop Sullivan, you see 325 rushing yards, 484 total yards for them. Incredible offense from Bishop Sullivan. That's why they're doubling up the Cats today, 40 to 20. And guess what? They're looking for more. They're trying to get another touchdown or two for these fans that have come out and supported them and walk away victorious. And the fake handoff there and throws it up to the left. Caught and, oh, misses the tackle. Gets around him. Oh, he's taken off. He's taken off. He might get all. Oh, he sidesteps around. He's at the 25 and he's down. Noah Anderson 
Ooh. What? What a catch and what a run after the catch. And not to take away from the moment, it looks like we have a player down. It's going to put him over 500 yards offense now as DeSue finds Noah Anderson for the first time today. Or I'm sorry, the second time today. Spreading the ball around to six different receivers as he avoids two guys. Third guy, he's keep running. Whoop, whoop. Keep dodging. <laughs> Slips around him. And then number 56, Zachary Spencer. It looks like he might it landed funny. It looks like a, he might have caught cleats to the abdomen or something. The but he's still down. First completion for DeSue in this half. He was 11 to 22 in the first half. Now 12 to 29 for the ball game, sitting at 212 yards passing to go with his 135 yards rushing. And we'll take another look and see. Spencer behind brings him down. And yeah, it looks like he gets. Oh yeah, I think the right leg of Anderson just caught him in a bad spot. Looks, I mean. He definitely looked to be hurt, and it took him a while to get up. He's running off the field under his own power. That's good to see. Hopefully he's all right. Well, it's never good when you're out of breath chasing someone, and then, no. you, and you have contact <laughs> with them. So now you're having trouble catching your breath, and you've just been hit somewhere on your body you don't want to get hit at. That can uh, be very frustrating. But nonetheless, Bishop Sullivan sitting here inside the 25-yard line and a chance to put more points on the board as their offense has erupted here after that slow start. They, they came out and warmed up in a... Real, real hurry. They're looking to add even more to this commanding lead. There's the snap. This who comes back, throws out to the left, caught, and brought down right around the 21 22. I believe that was Chapman on the reception. It'll be his third grab of the day. And I mean, these guys just moving their way down the field. They can see it. I mean, if they get this one again, 47 20 at that point, I mean, we're, we're in the fourth quarter. Cheshire's going to have to really buckle down if they want to get back in this thing. There's a snap again. DeSue looking right, throws it deep and caught. Chapman again. And he was wide open. Touchdown, Crusaders. Just a simple post corner route. Back of the end zone. And Armani Chapman getting the feet down as DeSue throws that corner out extremely well there. As you see, he just got by two defenders and hauls it in for his second touchdown reception of the day. And now with the extra point coming up, we'll see if they can make it a 27-point game. Chapman just, he's been all over the place today, and the extra point is good, 47 20 Sullivan uh, the Bishop Sullivan Crusaders just at this point walking away with this one Cheshire gonna have to work really hard to try and get back in this we'll see if they can so stick around for game time on your view after the break watch the newest movies instantly with movies on demand from Cox my parents are squatting in an abandoned building on the Lower East Side. They were homeless for three years before that, which is pretty much how they raised us. <laughs> Let's go! We ain't like other people. We got a fire burning in our bellies. The Glass Castle. Movies on demand from Cox. Just go to Channel One and choose all new movies. And we are back here, game time on your view. Bishop Sullivan stretching out their commanding lead, 47-20 over Cheshire Academy. And now we await the kickoff as Bishop Sullivan. Let's we'll see if they do, and there we have, we've gone back to the onside kick idea. Wrapped up at about the 49 by number three, Tanner Davis. Another guy is slow to get up here for Cheshire Academy. Ooh. Looks like, oh, he's hurt. I'm trying to get Hopefully a number he's okay. Number six, John Fox. Wide receiver for them. And, and I'm not sure where he took the hit, but he is in some pain. 
I'll take a look and see if we can see what happened here. Oh, okay, yeah. Lost his footing, comes down hard on the ground. And okay, off under his own power again. Hopefully nothing too serious. And good to see his teammate there, Joseph Tukapina, the kicker, come out and greet him and help him off the sideline here. It's been, it's gotten away from Cheshire just it got within 28-20, and then it's been pretty much all Bishop Sullivan here as their offense has just been in full bloom, over 500 yards on the day and out midfield. I mean, nobody's been able to, to have an answer for it at this point. And there he goes. To, oh, loses the ball. Is that – I think it's just going to be incomplete. Okay. As you see, an alert play by Price Stevens on defense. was doing some kicking over in this game here. You watch him coming Quick snap. off the edge, and he just reads Oof. the screen pass. and. Gets those big mitts up to knock it down. It's a five yard penalty. First down. Five yard penalty. First down. <laughs> Against Bishop Sullivan, that's going to give them a little better field position. That's going to give them uh, seven penalties for 55 yards on the day, but second and five, so that puts the run back in play. They're actually going to replay the down, so. I think they're actually going. I think they uh, ruled it a first down. That was first. They're not going to. It's just it was at the start of the play, so it's first and five. So that wipes away the incomplete pass here. They're going to go with doubles here. One man in the backfield for Kamun. There's the handoff. Takes off through the line, and good pick up there by Cheshire Academy. Look who's in on his eighth tackle of the day, Taraja Mitchell. There in on that stop. He has just been feasting out there on defense. Martino, I think, on the carry there. Looking pretty good. That's what they needed to get picked up about six. Uh, I'm sorry. Picked up only a yard. Been tough sledding for this running game with Cheshire. First time all year they've been held under 50 yards rushing. They still have time to get closer to 100. But uh, And the amount of points they've given up today. With with the, well, Coming into today, they'd only given up 74 points all year. 47 in this ball game alone. There's the snap. I mean, looks, throws quickly. And overthrew into a dangerous area. Multiple, multiple defenders out there. Now using Martino a little bit more at quarterback too. They alternate these two guys quite a bit, and it's to keep defenses off balanced. And they have various formations for both guys throwing the ball. We've even seen Kamun get the snap and then toss it to Martino to throw it. So it keeps you on your toes guessing. But the bigger issue has been up front. Their offensive line has been unable to control the defensive line of Bishop Sullivan. And when they're in third and long situations. Their receivers against the Bishop Sullivan DBs have not been a matchup that favors them either. Kamu takes a snap, throws it off. Oh, intercepted by Bishop Sullivan to Raji Mitchell. Look at him go, refusing to go down still. Oh, wow. Wow. He took that to about the 45. Amazing work by Taraji Mitchell. Uh, best player in the field making a potential dagger play here on defense as he picks off Kamun here. Look at that. Look at him in coverage. He's been so impressive in coverage. They just bowls two people over on his way down the line. And, I mean, impressive, impressive run by Taraji Mitchell after he gets the ball. No hesitation. Takes off after he gets it. I believe that's the first turnover for the Cats, and this guy is a difference maker on the defensive side of the ball. Urban Meyer coming to Virginia. He gets two linebacker commits in Kavon Pope out of Dinwiddie High School and Taraja Mitchell here out of Bishop Sullivan in Virginia Beach. They've gotten some players from the Tywood area before and Jalen Holmes from Lake Taylor and Wayne Davis, the defensive back. Martinez so, uh, with a snap running through the line. Picks Ohio up about State's, four. Ohio, Virginia's been good to Ohio State here lately, it seems like. <laughs> Mitchell's got the frame to be a oh, guy maybe. that plays right away up there, too. There's a the snap. And, oh, hesitation. Overthinking. Oh, man, he's down. Desu down quickly. Lost there. That's the third sack of the day for this defense. Two sacks earlier, if you recall, from Bryce Sebastian for the Cats. But, uh... Third and long with a 27-point lead, a chance to use some clock here and 
maybe run the football, you, you would think here. No need to pass and have a turnover that gives them a chance to score. Third down situation for Bishop Sullivan. Tyler D'Souza has been fairly good about those conversions. It's been pretty reliable for them. Let's see if he can make it happen again. Well, another thing, too, Sean, is that we're getting to a point close here in the fourth quarter where you might start to see some second stringers come in for both teams, especially for Bishop Sullivan with here a 27-point lead. You don't want to get one of those guys dinged up for an IMG game coming up, which is enormous for them. Very true. Third and 15. Long yards necessary for the first down. There's the snap. And DeSue taking off. Goes right through the line. And beautiful run. Lands at about the 44. You can see it again. Takes the snap. Takes off the hand up. And just takes off running. Dodges a couple of guys. Loses the balance there off that one defender. And comes down around the 44. Fourth down. And you know, you know they're going to go for it. Well, a punt, I, you know. Of course. You could pin them, but I don't know that they necessarily see it as. Try and grind it out, see what you can get. The handoff there, through the line, and then more. Martinez gets through the line and more. First down, Bishop Sullivan, as they continue to wear down this Cheshire Academy defense. They've spent a lot of time on the field. And they're close to having three guys with 100 yards rushing. D'Souza's got 141 on 16 carries. Jenkins has 109 on 10 carries. And Al Martinez with 14 rushes for 90 yards. So he's probably telling, Coach, I want a couple more carries to get to the 100-yard mark. How cool would it be if we had three of us with 100 carries? And the coach says, you know what, I think you're right. Now we're waiting for the next snap here. D'Souza lined up in the back. Takes a look, quick throw out to the right. And... Not able to get past the defense. Brought down right about the 40, maybe the 39. You still see Martino out there making plays on defense. He is such a weapon for them. Uh, jack of all trades, and you have to admire his hustle. He plays from whistle to whistle, nonstop. And dealing with it. essentially a full set of 10, 10 yards here they need to get. Tyler Jesu again committed to Maryland. Sportsman like conduct, number 56. What? 15 yard penalty, second down. Unsportsmanlike conduct, that's gonna hurt. And that's their third 15 yard variety penalty today and Jesu closing in on 400 total yards of offense when you combine his passing and rushing numbers. He's been just exceptional today. You could pick three or four different guys for this Bishop Sullivan team as a player of the game. Chapman comes to mind, Jesu, Tank Land, Taraji Mitchell for sure, but. Uh, Tyler Dessou having just a, uh, if you were doing a fantasy football, he'd be giving you a lot of points right now <laughs> as your quarterback. Dessou back takes the snap, looking upfield, lets it go, lets it go, and oh, broken up beautifully by Chase Kinsley. You know, Kinsley's got a chance to play if he wants to on the defensive side of the ball in college. He is about 6'2", 6'3", 185 pounds. He's got that pick six today and showing off the ball skills. But I like what he does here in coverage. Down the field, again, he, he doesn't get his hands on him, and he stays with him hip to hip. Very smart player. I mean, that's crucial. I mean, they can't afford to be giving up penalties especially right now on that trying to hold this offense at bay third and 25 though this is quite the mountain to climb for Bishop Sullivan at this point if they want to get to the first down here's the snap looking deep again oh dodges two but just too much that offensive line collapsed he had he looked up and all he saw were cats so fourth down situation this, here. This to me would be a punting situation now. Uh, and I think they're going to trot on the uh, special teams unit. I mean, four and, four and 26, you know, really. There's really not much of an option. And as we await the kickoff from Bishop Sullivan, Cheshire Academy will try and swing their offense back into this thing, but this might be too deep of a hole for them to get out of. There's the kick. Up and out at around the 40, maybe the 39. 
And Cheshire Academy will take the ball back and see what they can get going now. See if they can get their offense back in this thing. Six minutes left, a little over six minutes left in the fourth quarter. 27 points down. You got to get some momentum going in quickly. Well, my guess would be we're about a possession or two away from starting to see some of the second unit guys come in for either one of these two teams. And right now you want to get out of this game without any serious injury that can linger into the last two weeks of the regular season for these two teams. And uh, for Bishop Sullivan, there is no postseason. It's really two more games, and that's the end of their year. Uh, but they want to go out with a bang, having a two and four start. If you can finish up with a record of seven and four, that would be a tremendous way to go into next season. There's the throw by Cheshire Academy, broken up, incomplete. And we've got another player down. Nakai Meredith. The big level there on the back end of the secondary as you watch it again here with us. Again, Kamun and Martino both in there. And it'll be Kamun getting the snap. Looks out left, throws it. Ooh. Big hit. And got, they are just stockpiled with talent in the secondary. When you think of Chapman and Walker and Land and Jones and you know, that guy with the hit there, Keontae Jenkins, a 2020 prospect. That's Bryce Bug Sebastian. He's he's so integral to this team today. He hasn't touched the football much on offense, but has a couple of sacks. It's go. good to see him walk good. off the field under his own power. Showing a little, showing a little pep in the steps. So that's a good thing. So he will take a walk to the sidelines. Hopefully nothing too serious. He'll be able to get back in this for them. 177 yards passing for Cheshire today. 136 by Kamun, 41 from Martino. But the big story, Martino and Sebastian, just 33 yards rushing combined. And Sebastian has not carried the football in the backfield coming off a 100-yard game earlier this month, which is a little And off to Martino, me. takes a hit, rolls around it, manages to get a little bit there. Gets him closer to about the 50-yard lane, right around the 48, 49, or 44, excuse me. So 48. And now we await the snap again, Cheshire Academy. Trying to see what they can get going here. The handoff back through the line, and again, muscling right through. Gets himself to about the 47 on the Bishop Sullivan side. Clock is ticking down under five minutes here real soon. And uh, at this point, I think we're going to see some of the benches be emptied a little bit. The last thing, I mean, like you said, I mean, for Bishop Sullivan at the end of this, it may be over Cheshire Academy. They need to make sure they keep their guys as healthy as possible. And with the snap, here it comes. Handoff again. Trying to run through that line, but not getting much of anywhere. I thought he had it initially, but that second effort, and one drove him backwards. We got a lot of defenders pointing that it's a stop, but it depends where they put the, the initial... They're going to give it to him. He, yeah, he initially first got down. forward for the first down. It's where your progress is stopped, and he ends up getting uh, just enough for the first down there. 11 hard runs for 41 yards today for Jared Martino. And I mean, these last few runs, he has really worked hard to power right through that line. And he, he worked for every inch he got, manages to pick up the first down, so I'm sure that helps a little bit, gets a little bit more energy flowing through him and the rest of the offense. The snap and fumble on the play down quickly. And a little frustration there shown from Commune. He's had a rough day uh, in terms of being able to scoot in the pocket and make plays. Uh, he has made a couple of nice throws, 136 yards through the air, had that nice 27 yard touchdown pass to Kinsley that put them up 14 to 7, but ever since then, Bishop Sullivan has outscored them 40 to six. That's His domination. I mean, numbers point. you don't expect to hear with the Cheshire Academy. No, not at all. <laughs> at least not that side of it. And there's a snap, and again, Bishop Sullivan all over them. Looks like Taraji Mitchell might have been in the mix on that one. It's a third down for the 
At this point, we are now at about three minutes, 40 seconds left. Fourth and 11. Now it's just not much for Cheshire Academy at this point to be able to do. Now you wonder, is this when they start? Oh. Looks out. like we had a timeout. Cheshire Academy, second time. Timeout called from Cheshire Academy, and this has turned into a real lopsided uh, uh, game for Tre Cheshire Academy. Bishop Sullivan is just opening up on them. They have not slowed down, and I mean a commanding 27-point lead over Cheshire Academy, who you, you said they'd only allowed how many points this season? Well, coming into today, they'd given up just 74 points in six games. As you see, the final two regular season contests for Bishop Sullivan against IMG Academy, a powerhouse program out of Florida, which annually produces blue chip guys, four and five star recruits, and then Riverdale Baptist a week after that to follow. And this is a team that's you know, battled the injury bug, but now they're getting a little healthier and playing really well here, trying to get their third straight win to get over 500. And of course, Cheshire Academy, they've got more coming up as well. Their season continues. They're taking on Royal Imperial and Worcester uh, Academy. Both very winnable games. Royal Imperial got uh, handled pretty good by Bishop Sullivan earlier this month, and Worcester with just one win on the season to date as we talk. So I think that they can bounce back from this. And again, Coach Zeitman wants to see how his team battles its first taste of adversity. On the road, six-hour trip to Virginia. Now you go back home and can still finish up on a high note. And the snap, looking left, throws it, turns. Oh, beautiful catch. Turned at just the right moment, and he's going to stop right about the 35. Chase Kinsley again. That's his fifth reception of the day, and that's going to get him 12. He's got five grabs for 62 yards today, having himself a heck of a ball game, throwing that pick six. I think this is one of the real under-the-radar prospects when it comes to uh, next level college football. He's been a standout player today to watch. So if anybody's sleeping on him, they're making a huge mistake. Six foot two, five receptions. Again, he's been one of their best weapons today, offense, and I mean, we see him on defense. Yeah, again, I'm trying to figure out what's not to like about him. That's the thing a lot of recruiters will ask is, you know, well, he doesn't do this well. Do well. well, Chase Kinsley seems to do a lot of things well. He's, he's a pretty well-rounded talent on the outside, and they'll burn another timeout. Just, uh, well, that's the last one. They're out of timeouts. Two and a half minutes roughly left here in the game. And at this point, just trying to get themselves there. Can't afford any injuries at this point. And you said earlier in the game, you don't know how good an undefeated team is because they haven't lost. Oh, well, Cheshire Academy might, might need to answer that question after today. Well, they do. 335 yards rushing by Bishop Sullivan. They faced a real team that was ready to erupt in Bishop Sullivan. They, they were built up this year to be a big time program in Virginia, maybe the best in Virginia. They're still ranked as one of the premier programs in the state, despite the record being four and four. At one point it was two and four, but the combination of some injuries and some close losses and games that were winnable had them a little bit, you know, uh, wondering how good we really were in terms of Bishop Sullivan goes. But uh, this is a game that you saw the explosiveness really hurt Cheshire, and they have a lot of guys going both ways, and I think that's affected them. More depth for Bishop Sullivan to utilize, and that showed here in the second half. And now as we get ready for the snap, here it comes. Commune dropping back. Let's it rip. Oh, just right off. Tries to connect to number 81. Tiger Munn. But incomplete. Not able to get really anything going in the second half has been Cheshire Academy. No, they've had 187 yards passing, but just 29 yards rushing. It's been that multiple attack for Bishop Sullivan with the 235 yards to the Arab to Sioux and then 570 total for the game here as they've just really, uh, they've shred them in a lot of ways. Uh, underneath, deep, running the ball on the perimeter, and really have done so without that grinding between the tackles runner. De Sioux has morphed into that as the quarterback for them. So... Uh, it could be even worse if you consider that Bishop Sullivan had a couple of scoring chances early in the ballgame they didn't cash in on, including the one where they got picked off by Kinsley. And here we go again. We'll see what they're going to try and do. Oh, low snap back. Oh, man. Loss of yards there. And number seven, Rodney Mitchell. He's, he, I mean, lightning fast through that line. That is not the guy you want to get hit by as he goes blitzing through. Look, two guys couldn't block him, and he comes through unscathed. 
T Raw. They call him T Raw here in Virginia <laughs> Beach, and uh, he is one heck of a football player. One of the best linebackers that has come out of this talent rich Tidewater area, the 757 area code. Uh, there have been so many great uh, players that have gone on to big things at the collegiate and professional level. And there's been some, some great defensive players too Xavier at DB, Vince Hall, some of the linebackers that leaped to mind, Kai Parham, who played it. Uh, UVA, but uh, Taraja Mitchell's one of the highest ranked linebackers we've had in about a decade or so, and Ohio State's getting themselves oh, a gem. Get on. And it looks like out. timeout called. Well, it had to be on Bishop Sullivan know, because Cheshire's out of them. No, they don't have no timeout. No timeout. <laughs> the referee is saying they have no timeout, so they're, I don't know, uh, if it was on them, there would be a penalty because you can't use what you don't have. That's what I was taught at a young age, Sean. One in the third quarter, <laughs> can't use what you don't have. I looks like we're having a little discussion here between our officials. Trying to figure out. I mean, did, che did Cheshire try and call that? I'm trying to figure out which guy was supposed to write down the third timeout. And Bring him in. Let's go. Oh, oh, Not Cheshire did. We're going to wave off the flag. Nope, Officials they wave it off. told them they have one timeout left. Officials told oh. them they have one left. Oh. So a slip up by the officials gave them an extra timeout. Nah, we'll give the refs a break. They're tired. They're hungry. Hey, it's been a lot to try and keep track of today. And it's a warm October day, too. It is. It is. Just an extra one in a column in the wrong place. And there goes oh. It. oh, but it doesn't matter. Man, oh man. It doesn't matter because Taraji Mitchell, again, T-Raw. is ferocious. And look at that. Akeem Smith wanted to take a picture of Mitchell there, posing after the big tackle for loss, losing five yards. A little flamboyancy there shown by a couple of the Crusaders defenders. Oh, they're happy. They're excited as he just comes through. And Martino, he, he barely got a handle on me. I don't think he really wanted to block him because he's like, I might get smushed here trying to stop this guy. <laughs> You see it there, he's, he's posing with the with the picture there taken by Akeem Smith, the teammate. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct number seven. Uh, Fifteen yard penalty, automatic first down. It was funny, but not too funny because it does get a flag of unsportsmanlike. Yeah, it's funny, but is it worth can't it in do the it. end? No, yeah. I can't do it. That's the problem. It's viewed as showing up your opponent, and that's something that uh, it's a no-no. So he did get caught there. It'll stay fourth down. Well, I'm looking over. Oh, they just changed it. It is first down now. Okay. The official changed it. Uh, chain guys over here is fourth. They did. They did change it. All right. Just took them a second, but yeah, they they automatic first down there. Fresh set. A little under a minute and a half left. Here comes the snap. I mean, takes it, dumps it back. Oh, bobbled and dropped. Oh, uh, just, just, uh, they can't hold on. It's the second time that they've had a real hard time holding on to the ball, and then once they lose it, they can't get back a hold of it. You know, Sean, if you told me that Bryce Sebastian, who ran for 100-plus yards his last time out, would get his first carry with under two minutes to go in the ball game, I'd say, did somebody hijack him or something? What will happen? <laughs> and, and it's amazing. He had two, three receptions for 80 yards, but I didn't think they'd wait so long to get him involved in the running game. And they used Martino. They used even Jack Purdy for a carry. Uh, commune keeping it as a quarterback, but it's a little bit too late to get him involved down 27 with time ticking away. Just doesn't seem to be the Cheshire Academy we expected. There's a snap running, breaking through the line, and he's taken off. Wow. That was a hard hit, though, as he went down. Gets to about the 25, Jared Martino. The guy's tough as nails, though, I'll tell you that. He's got a little Here it is. He takes off right through the line. Free and clear through the line, goes down. Here comes that hit. Ooh. And that was uh, the boomstick level by Noah Anderson. Wide receiver showing that he will uh, come and knock you upside the head, too. Um, we're down to 30, about 30 seconds left. Jared Martino with a great carry there. And now we're going out to the right. And they're fighting for every yard. And the time will stop with him going out of bounds. Looks like they want to try and get in the end zone at least one more time. Try and cut this lead if they can to at least a 20 point lead. Make it a little more respectable. And, and it was a tight game at halftime. At this point, it's about finishing strong. It's something uh, everybody needs to, you know, it's a lesson you learn in life. You finish strong, don't give up until, you know, it's, it's not over until it's over. You keep trying until the bell, until the, the whistle blows and it's all over. 
Martino there sharing a hug with the coach on the sideline. Lots of work put in by Martino today. You know they got to be proud of him. And remember, it was 28-20 Then that last play of the half. Bishop Sullivan rode that wave of momentum into the break on that touchdown strike from to Sue to Tank Land to extend their advantage to 34-20. And uh, since then, no points for this Cheshire Academy offense that had 20 through two periods of play. It looks like Bishop Sullivan had to have called that timeout this time. We're pretty sure this time it had to have been Bishop Sullivan. Well, yeah, I think uh, they, they would have caught it after the last little <laughs> snafu. <laughs> I think we're going to make an adjustment on the clock to 23 seconds. Gives them a little, a little more time to work with. They could throw a pass here. Haven't, haven't attempted one in a while. It's been pretty much strictly on the ground this series. And here he goes, looking for a quick pass. Up and over, just oh, too far. Here we got pass interference, though. I think uh, number 11 was being hugged by his defender, which would be uh, Meredith covering him in the slot. Pass interference. Defense, number 14. Half the distance goal, first down. Half the distance of the goal, first down. Going to put him in better position. They might just get in that end zone before the end here, about 19 seconds left. That's the one area that Coach Scott will be a little unhappy about is the, the 10 penalties for 92 yards. Today. Other than that, it's been a real crisp offensive performance with an excess of 500 yards. The defense pitching a second-half shutout, containing the running game to under 100 for this Cheshire Academy team. And a lot of things to like and build on as they move forward, getting ready to make the trip down to Florida to take on IMG Academy. In some ways, they probably feel like they have some unfinished business given that they led them for three quarters and change a year ago and lost it late to a top 10 program in the nation. Um, they're going to be rolling in there with a ton of momentum. Again, 68 nothing win previously. Now coming out of this one, I mean, 47 points put up, tons of offense, just an all-around great performance from them. There's a quick throw out to the right. Oh, Chase Kinsley, so close. So very close. Incomplete pass. They were right there. He, he thought for sure he had it. You saw that. You saw that wash over him when he realized that it slipped out of his hands. They can get off. Well, given that it's fourth down, they move the chains. They didn't get off one more play after that, but they'd like to score on this down. 15 seconds. Probably can even get off three plays, but they got to get at least three yards to get two more. And here they go. Martino has the ball. Goes through the line, brought down. Gotcha. And that is, are they saying? Oh, uh, they're going to let the clock run out. Are they going to let the clock run out? And that looks like that's going to be it. It has been one heck of a game for Bishop Sullivan. They had an amazing performance. Just wow. Wow, wow, wow. They 47 to 20. Amazing. And Bishop Sullivan again with the winners here. But stay tuned because we've got more coming for you on game time on your view right after this break. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Fridays and Saturday nights here is like religion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like it's God and then it's football. For those three hours on a Friday night, everyone put everything aside. Whether it's race, whether it's religion, you put your own pride to the side, you put everything to the side, and everyone in the community comes together for that Friday night. Sports in America is one of those rare things that brings it everybody together. When those 
those lights come on. It doesn't matter what's been going on at home, at church, in the community. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just an amazing experience just to see the amount of fan support and just the camaraderie that Friday nights bring. And that's why sports is such a valuable tool to society, to America. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new Contour from Cox. Inside the universe lives your world and my world. Many others all connected. The man in black destroyed everything in my world. Earth will be next. I'm the only one who can stop it. The Dark Tower. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote. Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. Welcome back to Game Time on Your View. We had an amazing game here, 47-20. Bishop Sullivan taking down the undefeated Cheshire Academy. No longer undefeated. It was an amazing game. Uh, hopefully you were able to watch the whole thing as the first half had some amazing plays in it. Second half, Bishop Sullivan just took away the game from them at this point. So again, and some of the key players here in this, Taraji Mitchell, especially towards the end, Taraji Mitchell playing a big, big role on defense. DeSue, probably the biggest weapon offensively they had for Bishop Sullivan. They had an amazing performance today. Uh, Tyler DeSue, a danger as far as throwing the ball, running the ball. He was all over the place. Uh, he was making sure that his team stayed in this, even when they started out down. They started out down, and then they got up by two, and kept, uh, two touchdowns and kept on rolling. Also, some big helpers today were Armani Chapman. He was a big help. And Michael Martinez, Tavion Land, Tank. Tavion Tank Land, big help there. It was all extremely impressive to watch. What an impressive victory for Bishop Sullivan over, again, the previously undefeated Cheshire Academy. Very, very impressive game to see. And I think uh, we're going to try and see if we can... Uh, we're going to throw it down to Matt Hatfield on the field with Coach Scott from Bishop Sullivan after today's win. All right, here win. with Bishop Sullivan head football coach Chris Scott. His team a winner 47-20 to today over Cheshire Academy, knocking in from the ranks of the unbeaten coach. Second half shutout. This was a first half shootout, 34-20 to at the break. You guys got a couple of touchdowns before the half. What would you guys do adjustment-wise defensively? I think we just kind of buckled down and stopped giving up uh, some of those big plays. We gave up some big chunks early on with a reverse pass and a double pass, and um, they're well coached. Uh, they're well coached up, up there, and um, – and, and so we, we stayed disciplined, not coming off of our men um, in man-to-man -man coverage. And I, I think I just buckled down. And then when you got number seven back there, it's really, really, really hard to coach when you can just tell them, go make a play. You know, so that's kind of how we draw that up. And seven does, does a great job of leading that defense. And we'll chat with him in a second. Talk about your quarterback, Tyler DeSue, 234 yards passing, 135 yards rushing, really in command of the offense today. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, we challenged uh, each other uh, as coaches. And, 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 you know, it's kind of a cliche to challenge your players during the week, but we did. We of did that a little uh, and put it stressed on it and, and told 12 that when you're one of the best quarterbacks on the East Coast, you need to take over a game. And when we were a little tight and they scored a little early, 12 started taking over the game with big time runs on first down. And then some of those passes that he threw in there, I mean, that's that that Peyton Manning-ish in the scene right there with two guys on on, on uh, Tavion Land. So I, I thought he did a great job. Shows some improved mobility too. And final one before we bring in Taraji, uh, you got IMG Academy next. This team was dinged up early in the year, two and four start. You've now won three in a row. What's changed for this team now? I think just buckling down and getting uh, guys Guys acclimated to some new new positions. You know, we played. Uh, we've had to move some guys around. We've lost uh, about five guys for this season with with injury. And when you say five guys, some of those guys end up playing a way and a half. So that's that's not only five positions. That ends up being about seven or eight positions. So we got uh, got those guys that came in and filled those shoes and really st started stepping up. Uh, Price on the outside linebacker. Benny has really stepped up um, on that defense to solidify. And then on the offense, we have those young slots and receivers really coming up alive and making big plays for the, on the ball. Well, great job. Go enjoy. It. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, very much for having yep. us out. We'll bring in Taraji Mitchell, also goes by the nickname of T. Raw, the Ohio State commit, as he has nine unofficial total tackles today and interception. Tell me about the interception for you. That's your second or third of the year. Uh, that's my second. Uh, glad to get it. That's something um, people say I need to work on my coverage, and I'm um, just glad to prove people wrong. And I cover it. That's what I worked on all this offseason. So this man I was excited is for me to get it. He's the GOAT. <laughs> Tell me about what you guys did differently in the second half. You, you held an undefeated Cheshire Academy team to 63 yards rushing, I think it was total. Yes, what did you guys do to bottle them up? Uh, Coach Scott always preached that the second half it's a new game. We gotta come out, gotta come out fresh with a new mindset. You gotta grind. I mean, it's just a grind. It's a daily grind. Don't never stop to the, to the uh, clock hit zero. So, you just come out with a new mindset. Second half, new game. And lastly, what if, what does Coach ask from you leadership wise? This team was two and four. You guys play a lot of national competition. You get a chance to beat an IMG team next week that you lost to last year. Had it close. What do you guys got to do to keep going? 
Um, Coach Scott, I mean, I've never been like really much of a vocal person, but Coach Scott has always told me to lead this team. This is my team, senior year, and he just told me to take on. So um, through practice, we've just been balling, just going fast, going full speed, playing, playing for a purpose, playing with a purpose. So we're looking forward to um, IMG. Well, get ready, Columbus is coming your way. Taraji Mitchell and the Crusaders win today. Thank you so much for your yes, time. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll send it back upstairs to Sean. Thank you very much, Matt. Today's final score again, 47-20. Crusaders winning out over Cheshire Academy. Thanks for joining us on Your View. Check out yourview.com for archived games from our Your View family of markets all around the nation. For myself, Sean Hood, Matt Hatfield, and the entire Game Time team, goodbye from Bishop Sullivan. <laughs>